Friends, if you're looking for real old school laughs, you're in for a treat because we've got them right here. Flip City Magazine. Remember Mad Magazine? Then it went woke? Well, don't worry. Flip City has no chance of going woke. That's right. Four times a year, you'll get an actual printed magazine full of jokes, stories, comics, and more, all about today's pop culture, entertainment, and woke politics. Flip City takes terrible entertainment trends we love to hate with hilarious parodies of Lord of the Rings, Stranger Things, The Walking Dead, Star Trek, Hunters, and more. Trust me when I say there is nothing else like Flip City on the market. So subscribe today. It will be delivered in print. Or you can even get it digitally if you're one of those wacky Zoomers. Either way, follow our link and sign up today. And if you put in midnight, you get an extra 10% off. Check out Flip City Magazine today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Midnight's Edge in the Morning. I'm Tom Connors. We have the boss man with us. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Greetings. Glad to be here. Awesome. Glad to have you, of course, as always, or see you, I should say. Uh, we also have Mr. Paul Chato with us. How are you doing, Paul? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm feeling fine. Everything's fine there now. You want We're to tell good us? here. I got How locked out you? of my bank account. Just an hour ago, they wouldn't accept. What'd you account. do? Nothing. I guess I don't know what it is. So I'll, I just stop you know, ordering shit offline in the middle of the night. Yeah, I, I ordered Flip City, and then suddenly it blocked me. Oh, you're no, probably. I'm kidding. You sure it was Flip City, or was it some flip flops or mm. some stupid shit? Maybe I need a new bank. Yeah, it's uh, the, the Twitter seems to be uh, suffuse with these young maidens with check my bio links and tits and bio ass yeah. and bio yeah some nudes twitter and bio to, twitter needs to filter that out it's none bad. of them actually say something i need like clean your house <laughs> that would be good see that would be that would be great yeah you want to impress me lady would, come on over here and clean my house yeah forget about the porn like just do something useful can you do plumbing that yeah i can i can do plumbing see it's a trade. It's. Uh, I can do plumbing, electrical. Although the copper plumbing has disappeared, it's mostly now PEX, which I've never tried. Or like Mecca J points out here, it's just a lie. They 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 offer you kittens, and when you click on it, yes, there's right. no pussies there. No, no, and 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 I'm sure it's the same woman or two two women, you know, or two guys. You know, it's, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's like the old phone sex day. I mean, if you ever see yep. the woman in real life, she's ironing her clothing and she's smoking. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Do me, do me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Tell you me know, what you, know, you look you like. Stop hitting the cat. Oh yeah. What was yeah. you telling me? Yeah. You make me hot. <laughs> yeah. I'm redheaded. Uh, five foot two, uh, hundred <laughs> pounds, uh, hundred pounds. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yes, the good old days of just phone sex. Now, now it's, yeah. now it's been of course, I wouldn't years. lie to you. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> uh, not but away. anyway, I'm not in my house code right now. Fluffy slippers. <laughs> Get me another pack uh, of Marlboros, kid, or I'm going to hit you across the head. <laughs> well, good morning out there, everybody. A slow yeah. morning so far on the uh, super chat side. We just got Dr. Long Dongler sending in a pound 99 to remind you to pound that thumbs up and let us know that you're happy to see us here. We got yellow flash coming in a, a little bit here, and uh, who knows who else might show up as usual here on the show. But uh, yeah, so uh, check. Uh, we'll be checking in here in about. Mm, half hour 45 minutes give or take but in the meantime uh while we're waiting uh paul you watched a new show yes fallout something about falling out so uh yeah so those of you who are out there that's that's the hot 
thing right now on Amazon. I, I can say without uh, qualification that it's better than Rings of Power. I I somehow think that's not a very high part bar no, to pass. Paul. So yeah. so just you know I, I don't want to be your typical reviewer. So I you know I I basically do the first episode of some series. I do a, my green light yes or no. I put on my former network executive hat and I look at the entrails that they have brought me. I pretend it's a VHS tape. I stick it into my my uh, Mitsubishi 36 inch monitor. CRT monitor that weighs 400 pounds and then watch the pilot and yeah. and I make notes and and, and I, I just want to say it. that's a really high end set for the day. I mean that's that's a sign of success. It was that kind of uh, I mean that's a chick magnet right there. Back back in back in uh, 1990 that was the primo set the exactly. 6 inch Mitsubishi Mitsubishi. Yeah, I mean 8K TVs go get better. You ain't got, ain't got nothing on that. <laughs> No, nothing. Oh, I mean, it's 480p, for actually 480i glory. Now, do you, do you remember that uh, monitor? Yeah, I do. It, it was the best. That was, was I know. I, I was just a kid then. But even as a kid, I was a wannabe cinema file, and I mm -hmm. dreamt of having a laser disc and that monitor. Yep. I never got either. <laughs> you were deprived. You were yeah, well, my, again, I was a kid. I wasn't even in my teens, but I had, but I had hi-fi magazines. You know what? Well, see, we have a lot of things in common. So, I what I try to do is try to you know, combine a review along with what I would be looking for in a show. So, a show could be crappy, but it, certain elements of it would allow me to green light it as an executive in charge of production um, for. You know, for things that have not necessarily aesthetic reasons, as I, you know, I often joke, television does not have a quality button; it only has a volume button, volume knob. So, uh, you know, it could be the producers. Maybe you know, Aaron Spelling is producing it, and and you know that he's got a fantastic track record. And even though what you're seeing on the screen is crap, you're going to go, well, I'm going to green light it because it's Aaron Spelling. It does have a uh, sharp button, though. I messed with it; it didn't didn't. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make it sharper so so there's many different reasons for green lighting a show and, and and the things that you look for number one is the premise if it's an easy to understand premise right off the bat then that's you know you're fast out of the gate right uh 18 has is a high concept premise um then the other thing that you might do is add a old movie star like james garner for rockford files so there's in television you're always trying to come out of the gate fast and then hopefully you don't lose uh, speed and momentum as the horse goes down the track. Uh, that's really the entire thing. So then uh, on top of that, you want uh, on top of the good premise, you want good writing, interesting stories, uh, and then a really good supporting cast. So those are the things that I would look for in a show. So, um, so uh, you know what 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 are the elements that Fallout had that ticks those boxes? Well. You've got a lead female character that I've never heard of, never seen. So she's got to be really, really good, like Linda Carter good, but she's not. She She's okay. Uh, she might grow on me. She's uh, certainly cute enough, but she doesn't give me the, uh, you know, those star vibes. Uh, your one known, well-known cast member, which is uh, McLaughlin. Um, uh, oh, God. Uh, uh, Kyle McLaughlin. Well, okay, it's already spoilers, everyone. We might need to put spoilers up. <laughs> uh, I don't well, think anybody cares. He, he he disappears. He gets kidnapped. So I don't know when he comes back in the rest of the series. Uh, and then you've got um, uh, Mr. Uh, Goggins, who is the ghoul, and he's uh, certainly excellent uh, in it. So, and the rest of the cast mm. is actually not particularly good. And then the other lead who is part of the um, the Brotherhood of Steel, he's dull as dishwater. So I, I don't know how or why they hired that person, what they saw in him. Maybe he will grow on me in the rest of the show, but he certainly didn't grab me right, right from the beginning. And the first episode of hones to the uh, Fallout premise fairly well. At least the beginning of it does the the big wedding scene, which never existed in the game, 
but I don't care. I mean, there's you know two thoughts when you're doing a video game transfer to TV. One, you uh, take the stories that are in the game and then uh, you know move them over to TV like they did with The Last of Us. Because you know the the gaming community is just a subset of the normie community. The normie community is much bigger. So you know the idea that you transfer an idea or you don't transfer an idea is really based on just how good the idea is and whether it's going to entertain the audience. So in the case of Fallout, what they've done is decided that it's a whole new you know uh, Fallout Five basically, and they've given us a new story. That's fine, which maybe is going to be a much more interest to existing Fallout players because they don't they don't want to see the same scenarios that they've already played a uh, hundred thousand times so there there's some there is some logic to that uh, it starts off okay it has the nice fallout sarcasm it's got you know that tongue-in-cheek 1950s uh, see not sepia tone but you know brightly colored uh, feel to it uh, the world has gone through a nuclear holocaust and now everybody has to be happy underground in all these vaults and it's a very tongue-in-cheek game uh, and they do a fairly good job of it whenever they're dealing with in vault activity uh, but anytime they went to the for instance the brotherhood of steel it became horrible it was boring it's like the the dumbest stuff that uh, I, it was very badly written uh, I, I don't know what they were thinking, but if you thought that was badly written, then you just have to go to the last part, which was the resurrection of the ghoul. Uh, and if you know the game, you'll know who he is. And it was the worst Ed Wood style imitation. It was the apple dumpling gang, but worse. It was just amateurish. They spent two bucks on it. It was absolutely the worst, dumbest thing that I could possibly imagine. So I don't know what they did. They they gave all the they gave the uh, opening part to good writers and then the last parts of it to to bad writers. I have I have no idea. But I mean, you know, the game is very suffuse with uh, assorted casting that you would not normally see. But because it's prime, they're going to do it. It was it's passable. I gave the show just the barest of of. Um, of yes, let's go ahead, but you better make the rest of the series work or you're fired. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's it's okay. I mean, I found it, you know, I, I'm sure, listen, pilots, the first shows are always the most difficult. Uh, whenever you write a pilot, and I've written many sitcom pilots, the, the premise is start with episode five because your first episode is always shit. So try to think of what episode five is going to be like because that's going to be the good one. <laughs> don't write the crappy first one because it's going to be crappy. You have, you're introducing characters and you don't know what you're doing and you haven't figured it out. So that that's what this first episode kind of feels like. I, I think they'll get their act together. Uh, yeah, that's a, uh, put it this way. One of my main criteria is, do I want to see the second show? Yes, but just barely. So we'll see what it where it takes me. Okay, that's interesting because... Uh... Mr. H was very positive based on, I think, the first episode was that uh, he had seen. Now, I haven't seen any of it so far, and I have never played the game. And that actually is something of a strength to me, because that means I don't have the game to compare it to, so I can oh, assess it more on the show on its own. I'm not saying that's how it should be. Ideally, if you really want to succeed, you just have to embrace the source material so that you please the hardcore fans. And if you succeed in that and you've done it right, you should also uh, please the normie audience and to bring them in as well. If you think you can do one but not the other, you're already on the on the wrong foot here. Like me, my big interest is that it has Walton Goggins, who is one of my favorite actors. Like. There's very few people where I will see everything that they are in because they're in it. But Walton Goggins is like that. I'll see anything that he's in because he'll always elevate everything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I, I called him Walter Goggins by mistake, so I'm getting killed for that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Walton. I I apologize to you, Walton, my good friend. Uh, you know, next time we meet at the Bel Air. I'll, uh, I, I do I'll have to try to, uh, to arrange an interview with him at one at one point, because he's just such a great actor. He seems like a nice but, guy. 
he seems like a nice guy, perfect for the role. A a the show imbues enough of the feeling of Fallout yeah. uh, that that will make it unique. But the writing is wildly uneven. So basically, there's room for improvement, but the fundamentals are there. Yes, nicely put. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. Very glad to hear that. And hopefully, Amazon will be able to fix that in season two. And just well, I mean, maybe even the second episode. I I'm going to watch the rest and then give my final verdict. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah, or again, the second episode even. Yeah, I'm I'm hopeful the for the entire season, and I look forward to checking it out. Yeah, it's it's tough to I, I sympathize with the anyone. Uh, trying to crank out that first episode it's really really hard yeah indeed well uh before we move on here let's do a couple of more of these uh, super chats and first and foremost packing proton uh gifted 50 midnight's edge memberships that's amazing thank you everyone be sure to be sure to claim that and Tom, I believe that we have a membership stream on Sunday. Anything on the um, that um, might prevent that? Possibly, but uh, yeah. We'll, we'll get back with confirmation on that. But everyone claim that memberships, there will be a membership stream inside of the next few days because now both Tom and myself have completely independently of each other, both had the cold. And now we're getting over it, so there should be nothing other than schedules lining up. I hope and you didn't give course, it to Paul, each you'd other. You'd be welcome as well. You, no, that that would be that would be challenging. That would be a completely new type of uh, of uh, of influenza if it's able to to uh, to um, infect across the Atlantic via online communication. I'd be impressed. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if one day that someone figures it out. Yeah, I, well, actually, actually they already have. It. It's called co computer virus. I'm not even talking about. That. I'm talking about real, real virus. Wouldn't that be something? That'd be an interesting science fiction story. So yeah, well they, they, they well they already let that botch the latest James Bond movie. Uh, did did they? You haven't seen it? No. Oh, okay. Uh, then I'm not going to spoil it any further. I'm just going to say yes. Okay. <laughs> so yes, they did just that. Wow. Not not exactly that, but some variation of it, and it put the whole movie in Moonraker territory for me. Right. Well, Hollywood really doesn't know what to do with computers. Yeah, or viruses. Or viruses. That's right. As as long as it's um you know come never mind. I'm gonna get your channel into trouble. I'll shut up. <laughs> Well, either way, we'll let everyone know about the membership stream, including Chat, who, of course, is welcome to, to join for that as well. I've never but, been to one. I don't even know what it is. Is it like, do I have to be naked or something? No, you just have to be exactly as you are now, but uh, oh. we, we bring in the audience and uh, we have a chat with uh, with uh, all of the members. Oh, okay. It's like a special welcome aboard. Yeah, it's like a, it's like oh, a no, meet oh. and, it's like a meet and greet. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Meet and greet in the age of uh, of post pandemic. I can be gopher. Yeah. So thank you, packing protons, and uh, everyone be uh, be sure to uh, uh, to to claim yours and to say thanks to packing protons for for the amazing gift, and uh, we'll we'll make it worth your while with membership stream and exclusive membership com the content because we have a backlog to release now. But that name uh, always always conjures up the fact that guys have two protons so that means we must be helium if you say so yeah <laughs> or at well, least you're the, you're, you're, helium, you're the chemist maybe. we're we're packing two protons right yeah. i mean most of us well yeah well what from one dude in austria uh clark miller says for for five dollars are we going to let My mikey out of the accountant's website oh, today boy. No. Or do we wait until after tax day is over? Yeah, I think we I think we three wait. more days. We we wait and then we give him time to recover and then we party. Yeah, our I'm tax gonna... day is end of April. 
haven't yeah. heard from my then, then we're going to crash his house and we're going to party. <laughs> oh, Paul, oh, He's got Paul, three more days of hell. But I did make him laugh with my AI song I sent him. So, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. No, Mikey uh, Mikey's going to have to toil away a little bit longer. And, um, and yeah, then it's party time afterwards. So, that'll be great fun. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Tomok says, for $20, I got tired of the in-bio post. So I made a games in bio. It links to my backloggery. I'm only down to about 354 games to beat in my collection. Wow. Wow. Only 354 to go. Um, yeah, I hope that you, uh, I hope you live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just know with myself, like I because I I know the games that I have that I want to beat at some point, and I know how much time I have available to play them. And there's it's a whole lot less than three hundred and fifty-four. I mean, it's it's like it's less than a hundred, and I'm like, I don't know that there's enough days left in my allotted lifespan that I'll be able to do this. Well, there's a couple of games that have frustrated me to no end that I've not been able to finish. Uh, there's one, uh, Crash Bandicoot. One, I can't. I think it's on uh, PlayStation Two. I was playing it, and I can't get past that damn uh, rope bridge in the in the clouds. I can't get. I, I can't get past it. I, I, I I've tried you. a thousand times to get. I have. I have the same thing in Sonic Three. There's like this this casino stage i forget what it's called and then i'm like trapped inside of this like trapdoor thing and i freaking can't get out yeah. and like it's I was i'm still stuck in the infinite loop and pit life. fighter same here like pit fighter can't get I, out of there i no can't idea. understand that yeah uh andre i i've tried i cannot tell you how many times to cross that rope bridge and I, I have the same thing it. also in Earthworm Jim, actually. I can't, can't freaking... It's it's too like, hard. You have to use the whip and hit like this exact like thing. Um, this horn, this elk horn in like some stage. And it has to be freaking pixel perfect. I can never freaking do it. It's Did I say so pit difficult. fighter? I meant pit jumper or whatever. That one where you go... There's, a, there's an N64 game. I can't remember the name of it. I almost finished it, but uh, you, you can be... Uh, you can play it as yourself, or you can play it inside your robot uh, helper. And there's a segment in it where you get into your robot helper, and you have to make a loop in, uh, you know, passing deadly things, and you got to get back to the finish line in time. And it's like, I can't do it. I, I have been within a hair's breadth of m making it before the time runs out, and I've and I've done that, I don't know, a thousand times. I just cannot do it. it. That really bothers me that I can't finish a game that I'm almost done. And it, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's so frustrating. Anyway. So, yeah, I like. Uh, I have like one of the things. Like One of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to finish all paths of Kid Chameleon without cheating. Hmm. I hope I will live long enough to do it. You know, it's it's it it is a goal. Yeah, it is a goal. It is a goal. I, I am ha glad that I finished both the uh, banjo kazooie and banjo tui completely on my own without cheating. So that that was that was a lot of work. I love those old games. Oh my god, they're so good. They're so much better than any new AAA oh, yeah. games, right? I'm going to do a video about that. I'm gonna, uh, have you played games, banjo kazooie? I have. Yes. Isn't it a absolutely brilliant game it is it is um uh, it, it is of course i haven't gone very far in it but i've <laughs> i've i've seen others who are far better at it play it and i've seen how much fun it is when oh you it's do just it. great when, because, like, like i don't have like room sensation i can't play 3d like ah. so so i can play a little bit and i can see yeah for a 3d game this is fun and I've enjoyed like some 3D games for like a few minutes here and a few minutes there, and then I end up stuck in a corner, and then it isn't fun anymore. <laughs> uh, but but I recognize the craftsmanship that oh. has gone into 
into that and crash Bandicoot. Yeah, I, I see that that's the same kind of fun mm -hmm. that I have with my 2D games, only on a 3D playing field. And I can also recognize that it's done right. And when you have someone who isn't an old man gamer screaming at the clouds like me, that you're going to have a good time with it. And I recognize that. Well, there's there's one game, not that we can agree. We're, well, it's Friday. Who cares? Uh, my my son uh, was able to play Mario 3D Galaxy, where you have to go around uh, globes. So when you're under at the bottom of the sphere, you're actually turning right to go left. And you're hitting right to hit left. And I, 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 there's no way I could figure it out. But my son... That's the, that's the one thing I do hate about the strike games. You know, Death Strike, Strike, Jungle Strike, Urban Strike, the helicopter games, right? Mm -hmm. They are amazing games, and I love them all. But they have that exact problem right with, there. With the that, stick. Uh, yeah, that the, that the joystick, depending on how yep. you are on screen, you have to press left. Right. Really make the helicopter go Correct. right. <laughs> Because you kind of like have the wrong view for the screen. Like you kind of like you have the controller as if you were inside of the uh, yep. uh, of the uh, helicopter looking out, controlling it that way. But instead, you're viewing it from outside and the camera doesn't rotate, mm. meaning that uh, that uh, it will constantly be like wrong field of view with the, with the mm. controller, which is a pain in the ass. But uh, other and uh, other than that, fantastic game. But yeah, I, I, I can see why Nintendo didn't do. I think they did two. Uh, they did. Galaxy. They did Jungle Strike and they did uh, Desert yeah. Strike, and then they didn't do. They didn't. I don't think they did Urban Strike, and I know that they didn't do uh, do 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 the one after that, uh, Soviet Strike. That was on <laughs> PlayStation. No, serious. It's continued. It's wow. In a Soviet strike and nuclear strike were both on the on the uh, PlayStation, and then there was another one after that, but I forgot the title. Then you're basically running around in Ed Two O Nine, kind of like in. Battle I think Wars. that was a WGA strike. <laughs> Might as well have been, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, bringing it back to what we generally talk about is that clever? Indeed, and also oh, bringing exactly. it back to to the super chat. Mike uh, just chimed in. Mike hey, is Michael, out of commission after April fifteenth, and then spring break with my kid. I'm offline until April twenty second. Still not a, okay. Well, after April twenty second, you crash your house. We're gonna have a big party. Well, the April twenty second is the beginning of Passover, so we won't see Mikey. You know, for a while after that. <laughs> and... if, you want, if you say so. <laughs> so yeah, but we'll coordinate something. I'm gonna. We're gonna. Mexican have, Iron Jew. Have a big, uh, big party then. So yeah, I thought Passover was behind us. No, no, it's coming up. Oh, okay. Well, fine. Then we'll have to have that big party after Passover, so everyone can join. So that will be fun. I'm confused. Uh, uh, well, just say yes, uh, and uh, okay. then let's uh, let's see here. Moving on, uh, hype. Uh, I just saw one more I want to to bring in here since we had some uh, some uh, uh, gamer talk here. Chaos uh, Sonic One said for five dollars. Andre, if it is the battle in Casino Night Zone, you have to not jump. You have to move to the, the end pad up. And down, I will send you a link on it. But please do. And why didn't you send me this thirty years? Thirty ago years ago. It? Yeah. <laughs> well, then you'd have to be on CompuServe or, or Prodigy. This was the problem because when this game came out and it ruined my life, there were no Ninja guides, Turtles had a similar no problem. And in fact, there's that famous scene on the. Uh, I think it was uh, one of the angry video game nerd videos where he finally figured out because there's this one spot on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that kids could never get past because everybody would jump and they'd always fall in. Well, it turns out you just walk right over the edge Bastard. or whatever. Yeah, all these years, people are just like trying to figure it out for all this time. Yeah. It, but yeah, back yeah, yeah. in the day, if somebody knew, you couldn't just tell everybody, right? You know? 
No, exactly. It was no internet. It couldn't be shared. So yeah, unless the John Nintendo Jones, Power had it in it or something like that. Yeah. And John Doe said the similar. Andre Casino Night Zone Act Two Battle. You do up down on the D pad to make the battle go up and. Oh, you what was I supposed to know? Fucking hell, yeah. Uh, and Packing Protons says for $5, I love Zelda games, but I can never figure out where to go in 3D games like that and Metroid. Need a walkthrough. Fun, but double the annoyance. Well, yeah. The 3D annoyance. My issue uh, with 3D games is like sometimes the background and other elements blend so much that I just can't differentiate. So I feel like I'm lost in a muddy world and I can't tell what's what. Well, Spyro is was a lot of work. I mean, yeah. I got, it, it has gotten better, obviously, in the last twenty years. The but I mean, we're talking Spyro was so low, I would get sick playing it. Yeah, we're talking PS one, PS two era games. Oh, yeah. They've gotten better over the years, but then again, I still get stuck in rooms looking for shit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of gaming, talk moose says for five dollars. I passed out drunk watching geeks and gamers, and woke up to this. Blessed. <laughs> well, good That's fantastic. Glad to be of service. Which yeah. and gamers show like Tuesday's show? Because if that's the case, then that's not good. Uh, but like, yeah. Yeah, of course like, it depends a little bit on which day. I know I was just being facetious or jokey, but yeah. 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 Let me see if we have um yeah, and then we dropped a video earlier today on the Black Samurai movie that is coming, on which Hypergiver mm. 2 says for five dollars. According to Guichi Ota and uh, Akuchi Mitsuhide, I'm sure I butchered nice, that. Nice, nicely done. Sorry about that. Both retainers of Nobunaga himself. Yasuke was nothing more than Nobunaga's glorified pet. Yeah, that is um, that is pretty much what uh, I have been able to gather as well. Uh, and this, of course, is in reference to the video that we dropped earlier today. Please check it out because YouTube is suppressing it hard, uh, as it does most videos uh, these days, I get the impression. So check it out, where I give my take on the Black Samurai movie, which is a rather liberal interpretation of history. Let us uh, put it that way. Uh, and. Um, uh, with that, let's put a pin in the Super Chats for now. We will get back to them, but let's move on with the main stories. Because as you all know, Gina Carano, with the help of Elon Musk, recently sued Disney, arguing that she was illegally fired for expressing her political beliefs. Tom, see if you can uh, find the story and put on uh, put on screen here. Uh, now, in the in the last thirty six hours here, Disney filed an official response, or rather, they filed a motion to dismiss the entire lawsuit. And their response, which of course has uh, been uh, filtered through in detail by the Park Place, which we see right here is basically that, yeah, we did fire her for political beliefs. They didn't say those, that in, uh, in uh, those exact words, but that is still the gist of the letter. Because they double down and saying that, yeah, we, we choose who we want to associate with, and uh, we do not like your political views, and so we have our First Amendment right to not associate with her. That is kind of the um, official response from Disney. That's not the exact words. But again, that is the gist of it. That is their defense and their, uh, their reasoning for... for well, actually, if you read this law. here, if you read this here, they're stating exactly what we said. She didn't get fired over the fucking... Uh, uh, yeah. Well, how do I want to say that? Yeah, yeah, the Yahtzee one, the right. Yahtzee post. She got fired over the beep bop boop. It says right here in their motion to dismiss, Carano's claims are all barred by the First Amendment as Supreme Court held in Hurley versus Irish American gay, lesbian, and bisexual group of Boston. First Amendment embodies the core principles of a speaker's autonomy. It bars the state from dictating expressive, expressive enterprises, what to say, how to say it, 
and whom to say it through. As the court further held in Boy Scouts of America versus Dale, that principle means that the state cannot force an employer engaged in speech to speak through an employee whose own views or public profile could compromise the employer's own message, even if the employee does not express her views on the job. Boy, they are really stretching here. Boy. Really fucking stretch. For somebody who tried to claim the same exact fucking things when it came to the Reedy Creek deal, even though they, that's a whole nother scenario as far as the, what they're trying to claim there. Yeah, they're full of shit. Uh, uh, and then they say that she was fired over her political opinions about the yeah the the one post too. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait to see this. She did not publicly trivialize. That's another thing. Uh, she proved y'all or you proved her right is what y'all did, Disney. Yeah, uh, Chato, uh, I'm sure that you have uh, seen this as well. And uh, Gina Carano even responded to their response, basically. And she's like saying that Disney has confirmed what has been known all along. They will fire you if you say anything they disagree with. And then misrepresent the line and miscategorize you to do it. I don't think that this is a very strong... Uh, Defense for Disney here. I'm not so sure that this dismissal is going to go through. Although you can never say in the state of California, I guess. But but Paul, what's uh, your first response to this? Well, again, the law is an ass, as they say, and justice and and uh, the law have are are not connected. So people really need to watch out what they feel or think about this entire situation. In the end, it's it's funny that Disney is treating themselves as an individual and treating Gina as the corporation. That's what's funny about this. Nor it would be normally flipped. That's what I was thinking, Paul. I'm like, this seems well, bass backwards here. Bass backwards. And I, if anything, it feels yeah. like they're making an argument for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, so I don't know what American law is or California law because I mean, again, each state. It's it's why you choose to do a patent. Um, uh, you know, patent arguments in Texas because you get more favorable, uh, you know, the people who own the patents are, are more favorably disposed in Texas. So you try to pick and choose the jurisdiction that will give you the best results. In this particular case, Disney had, had offices in California. So that's why it's uh, taking place there. And I think Gina lives there also. Um, those are the things that, you know, we need to concentrate on is just what's California law because, uh, this thing already be, might be a done deal just based on how the law works in that state. It is silly uh, on the on the face of it. Uh, really, what Disney has proven here is that, yeah, the contract might have been up, but then why go through this entire process of quote unquote firing her if she's already if she's not an employee? That's well, really. That's Thing. that's the thing that they're they've stepped into a giant pile of poo with this response exactly paul that's what i was thinking too because before when they were just their original quote-unquote closest thing to a public statement was that statement that came from somebody supposedly inside lucasfilm to can't remember which outlet originally um but we had done the, the story too on that because it was that one individual who had leaked pro disney star wars shit in the past that got the first wind of it or whatever. And that's when it spread from there. Um, there, and even in that initial response, they were still hiding behind most of the idea that, you know, she didn't have a contract renewal is all. If they had just said that and stuck with that through this whole thing, that would have been their best defense. Well, I think so. Because then it was up to, to Gina to prove that, you know, that there was all these other things going on. And even as somebody like script doctors pointed out, you know, unless you got something in writing, that don't mean shit in Hollywood. And she would have been up against a, a bigger uphill battle. But now with Disney coming out and saying this publicly and officially owning it, she, they just made her fucking case for it. It, it was dumb. I mean, they, Sorry they for my been, language, but yeah. Yeah. They would have been better off saying uh, John Favreau does not speak on our behalf. Or anybody for that matter. Well, well, well not, yeah, yeah but he, he was the one who they, you know, they alluded to the promises that he made to her in terms of uh, what she was going to do, become a, you know, that, that other, 
that other show or the that, rangers of the republic and yeah. so on yeah yeah so the thing is disney should have i agree with you they should have said well though there was no contract there was no requirement for us to extend that contract and and john favreau does not speak on behalf of disney and then just shut up and see what where it goes yep and yeah because who actually said this was it disney's that's what i didn't catch you mean this right now response it was just in a written disney response legal. from disney legal okay yeah yeah and uh, this would be the same Disney legal that botched it completely and utterly in Reedy Creek, which was a total I heard that was a success. <laughs> yes, I, I saw in, uh, what was it, the Hollywood Reporter that the yeah. Reedy Creek was a wash, like it was 50-50 <laughs> for both of them. Oh, my God, is that carrying water? Like, what, mm. what kind of... What kind of sexual favors did they do to get that story out? That, that was hilarious. Mm -hmm. yeah no and i mean this was already kind of a tough battle for gina and i just think they helped her out so i, I don't think she's gonna win but you don't think so no there's too many vagaries here honestly i i, I wouldn't go as far as to say win but i feel like disney is gonna do their damnedest because this oh, yeah. what they put in here i don't think this is gonna get the uh the case tossed up i i think that they're gonna get so far and then disney's going to realize that they're stuck in a position where they they're probably going to lose well, because discovery will happen and they're just going to try and settle well the they, problem is they, she's not going to settle for what anything less than what she asked for I if, don't think. if they can get past this dismissal and get into discovery then it's bad for disney that's what i'm saying well, yes yeah. that's exactly what i'm saying past this hump Right, and I think they just helped her out here a little bit, but we'll see. Oh, it's the dumbest. I don't know what they were thinking. That's what I was saying the and whole I'm time. Was if they had just stood with the whole, we didn't, you know, we didn't have a contract with her. You know, <laughs> that would have been their better best defense, basically, and they didn't stick with that. I'm I'm not a lawyer, but I do have a jacket and tie. That's right, and neither am I. But uh, I play so one you on don't TV. Have a jacket so. and tie. No, I just play one on TV. Yeah, correct. <laughs> um but uh no i it's, have it's watched a lot of perry mason that does qualify that, there you go there you go uh, uh i mean it's it's their fancy new york lawyers that also screwed things up in florida who is it um, yeah our legal legal in florida andrew is that his yep. name uh, legal mindset yep it's absolutely brilliant like, he, it's just wonderful to listen to him and break well, he him nailed it down. Well, because he knew exactly what he's talking about, because that's oh, where he used Florida, to work. And it's his, yeah. it's his area of interest. Exactly, yeah. And, and God, God, Imagine that. You have somebody who actually, <laughs> in their actual the realm of interest. Now, maybe if they'd carry that idea over to Hollywood and quit hiring, you know, Gilmore Girl writers and shit like that to do sci-fi, maybe they'd be all right. Yeah, well, Disney, Disney likes their New York lawyers. They're big New York lawyers, and... They're in California. California is a strange place. I mean, we all yeah. know that, right? So basically, I Gilligan's don't think anybody, Island. Yeah, I don't think anybody had a question about that. But so. no, good for her in this point. Anyway, I think uh, I think this was kind of a small victory for for Gina. I don't know if you guys see it that way, but we'll have to see how things go from here. But uh, I, I certainly think we, see it that way. I don't think I Disney's going to win this motion. Yeah. Disney, Disney was obviously going to file a, a motion to dismiss the of course. They want this thing dismissed. So obviously they were going to do that. The only question was, what's the nature of that uh, motion to dismiss going to look like? In this case, it was a motion to dismiss that basically admits guilt in everything they're being sued for in the first place. I don't see how that could be a bigger win for Gina Carano. Now, to me, the big win here is, uh, is uh, that this is the legal system of the state of California that is going to, um, going to decide what's going on here. Now, of course, what we are used to going back decades, is we hear all these stories of the crazy Florida man. We need to switch this around to crazy LA man, because the crazy land right now, the place where black is white and up is down and everything is crazy and crime is legal and protecting your property rights is not, is California. 
who the hell knows how the legal system there is going to work to me that is the big x factor right there because it's a state that has shown itself even for i'm like i have but i haven't been in california since 2018 but just witnessing from the outside just reading the reports hearing from people i know who've been there first hand first hand second hand and third hand accounts that place is crazy now uh, and now we have to rely on that the courts there are suddenly going to be sane well maybe but to me that seems like a, a stretch here so i'll be curious to see how this goes now california is very california is very labor friendly so they it might actually be in and in, in gina's best interest to be in florida I, and maybe in, i don't know i couldn't say all i'm saying is i have no idea how this is going to roll because all the normal rules of thumb they to me they don't apply there but uh, let's hear what uh, someone uh, someone else here thinks yellow flash you Yo. think that disney is going to be successful in dismissing gina carano's uh, lawsuit uh not according to legal mindset yeah, I haven't had a chance lawyer. to see his video yet. And of course, we, we just uh, spoke about legal mindset. And I would imagine that this is a slam dunk for Gina Carano. In, in, not in necessarily winning the whole thing, but certainly in proceeding to trial. Uh, is that what legal mindset was saying as well? I would certainly hope so. Yeah, he was saying that, that it's not going to get thrown out. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's fantastic, and uh, welcome. Glad to have you here, my friend. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, it's been uh, quite a week in the realm of uh, gaming, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, before we everybody's... break into that, oh, go ahead. So everybody's mad about Square Jaw, uh, Mam Solo. Yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> I'd love to hear uh, Chato's thoughts on uh, on that as well. But I was told if it was Ripley, I now i would complain so i remember one of the first shots of her and alien was her in a tank top with no bra and panties yeah yeah and the funny thing is the one who insisted on that uh on that you know who that was who insisted that she wear that tiny little uh uh skimpy underwear you know who insisted on it it was, it was her. sigourney wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was her it was her who yeah did because that. supposedly ridley scott was like you can't wear that you can see your bush yeah. <laughs> and, he, and she's like so <laughs> and he made up some elaborate story for years that wasn't true about how they had to supposedly uh fudge out the 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 hair in the movie which is not true no just, actually i think they did that it was uh, no, James they didn't. cameron in the set in the sequel who decided that you know what screw it she wants to have that let her have it sigourney really sigourney said that was bullshit that ridley made up okay that's not I true I believe her. Um, yeah, Ridley is making up shit, just yeah. purely based on his garbage. You, you, Prometheus. You, you, you know how uninterested women were in that, uh, in her character, uh, Alien Three, which I wasn't that interested in going to see. But at the time, a third of my employees were lesbians, and they <laughs> went, "Paul, um, we're taking you to see Alien Three. So they took me to a, a screening of Alien Three, where. Uh, I guess they got their gaydar out and the whole theater was just filled with like-minded women. And when uh, Ripley finally came out, came to, and uh, went, uh, got down to her skivvies, the entire audience stood up and screamed. You know, what's funny is three is <laughs> the only movie she fucks a dude in. Yeah. It didn't matter. She was down to her skivvies and that's what the entire audience was waiting for. That, that was the, <laughs> the classic moment to just have an, I just an find it ironic filled with women. I was just saying screaming. that it's that ironic funny. that that's the one the lesbians gravitated towards, and that's the only one that she actually sleeps with anybody, and it's a man. <laughs> it's that I, doctor dude. I wish they would give us the 4K Blu-ray of that movie. I wouldn't mind it, especially the uh, give extended it time. cut. Give it'll, it time. it'll happen eventually, yeah. but Disney's I don't hate Alien it, so. 3. Alien 3, I think, is The thing I hate about Alien 3 this... is that it's a follow-up to Aliens. That's the only problem. Other than that, it's fine. Because yeah. other than what they did with Newt and uh, Hicks, I don't. I, I like the movie. That's the only problem I have with it is what they did to those two characters. Anyway. I like the studio cut of it. 
I, I wouldn't mind it in 4K at all. I I do like stuck the fourth one. That one I don't like apart from the yeah, no. water scene. Yeah, that one I don't give a shit about. I, it all ends at three with me. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that was Charles Dance. Yes. Who, who Unless did, maybe. Who, three? who was, what was the director? Who was the director of three? That was uh, David Lynch. Yep. Yeah. Was it? Or not no, Lynch. Uh, uh, Lynch. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, which one was it? Was it? Uh, David Finch. 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 Yeah. Finch. Yeah, Finch. That's what Finch. I meant. Finch. Finch. Yeah, I was, was going to say the same guy that did Usual Suspects, right? Yeah, I knew what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, I. No, that was Brian Singer who did the. Uh, Brian. What, what? Fincher did. Fi- did he do Fight Club? Fincher what did he did do? Fight What's Club, he yes. famous for? Okay. That's, that's it. Fincher did Fight Club. That's it. Okay. Very unique director. Has he done anything lately? Yeah. Oh, oh what's he oh, done? Damn it. Uh, well, he also did the uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Seven and all that. Oh, that's a great he movie. The, he did the pilot for for House of Cards. Uh, the social media, the Facebook movie. I don't know what he's done. Seven is his big, one. big one besides Seven. the Facebook great. movie. And, and and yeah, and he's the guy who did Alien Three. And I do stand by that uh, that uh, uh, assembly cut of it. That is a really decent. No, movie. I liked Maybe a lot of the ideas in that. Yeah, yeah, I liked all the ideas in it. Just like I said, as a kid, I didn't really care because I was a kid. But as an adult, I see more now why people then rejected that movie. Because yeah, you go through the journey of aliens, and th- to have that happen to those two characters is really well, shitty basically the it's audience. the same thing as the beginning of the terminator woke fate isn't it kind of only yeah only that's a little worse because you actually see the the death on screen like and that to me the, like terminator dark fate literally felt like you were getting shot at the same time as john connor was as the audience member you're just like how can you do that how you know, it's the same thing. You're you're right, but only worse in, in Alien, I guess, to a point just because it's official and you can ignore the Terminator sequels after two or three. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's up there with Christopher Nolan as an auteur who's produced and, I mean, he's produced a ton of television stuff, House of Cards. I don't think yeah, he has absolutely. Nolan's track record, though. No, but anyway, on this whole idea of, uh, well, you all know. The stuff he's done. He's done way more stuff than Nolan has comparing the character to ripley is horrible because like not only that they're trying to rewrite the history of alien as it is and i don't mean with the prometheus stuff i mean with the behind the scenes oh, stuff. Yeah. I, got, I watched this new documentary from 2019 called memory the origin of alien it is one of the worst documentaries i've ever seen most of it is just a bunch of modern women critics trying to shove feminism into a movie that didn't exist at that time because the only reason they 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 just neutralized the characters so they could be male or female when they casted them. It had nothing more to do with other than that. And they're trying to pretend in some roundabout way that it was this grand design that, that Ripley was a woman and all this other shit. And it's like, nah, it just happened to work out that way. It's like, and not only that, it's like it was kind of like Ridley even admitted that he was basically making halloween in space so you have the final girl basically that was his whole thing there if anything but otherwise it was nothing more than that right and then they try to also play like there's this class thing and all this other shit in the movie i'm like where are you getting this from the, yeah there's different uh, uh, the other different roles they play like you know there's the engineers and then there's the scientists and so on but i don't get this it's, it's, fucking it's, power play it's they're talking about that have taken over yeah they're really rules. trying to everything make it out to be shit that it's not everything even. no everything is being looked at i just read a paper from uh, i can't remember which university in chicago uh by a trans archaeologist oh, i heard something like that if it is of. it's just insane i i the, the the number of famous individuals especially roman emperors who are actually really trans <laughs> you know what i learned from that making that was even the only thing that was even unique was that basically it, it solidified what i've always said is that ridley scott came to alien with everything predetermined for him and it, he was just lucky that it was all set up for him and him just went in there and basically be a cinematographer but the funny part of it was is dan o'bannon tried getting it made for years and everything they did the studio said no to um, cause I think it was Walter Hill who was supposed to, uh, direct it originally. And then he passed on it after a while because shit just didn't come together, but he was the one who brought in Giger and all this other shit. And the studio rejected him 
But then when Ridley Scott said, oh, yeah, Giger, he's the guy to do this. The studio was all on board. That's hmm. basically all he got done was that everything that Dan was trying to do for like three years, Ridley said, oh, no, that's the right idea. And the studio was like, brilliant, great. You know, but when Dan said it, they're like, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't have penises and vaginas all over this movie, you know, with the Giger art and stuff like that. But when Scott was all for it, then they're like, oh, yeah, bring him in. You know, <laughs> It's funny how that works. It, it is what it is when it is. That's <laughs> Hollywood, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're, they're, they're yeah, like, exactly. Why didn't you think of this? Why did you bring this guy to us years uh, years ago? They would have told Dan about it. That's basically the way they did it, even though they fired him from when, when O'Bannon was working on it with Walter Hill. <laughs> like, that's the funny thing. Because he brought him over and everything, and they fired him because they're like, O'Bannon, no, we can't make this. O'Bannon did a shit ton of artwork for them. I got he even book. has a bunch of stuff that he never finished. That was the best part of the, the whole documentary. The rest of it can suck a dick. The best part was O'Bannon's wife and him t- and her talking about all of his experiences and what he went through to get the movie made and all the stuff that he's got that he still hasn't finished yet before he passed away. He has got a whole like closet full of, uh, you know, those, those office boxes, the big square office boxes, just chuck full of scripts and ideas and shit. Yeah. They were never finished. Need to chuck them. Well, she's got them, and hopefully they'll do something with them someday. But uh, eh. now's it's, the wrong time. It's the <laughs> Move on. Eh. Sometimes some of the cool stuff gets undug, but now now is the wrong time to do it just because of the wokeism. But speaking of wokeism, so yeah, so what's this video game thing all about, Flash? Because uh, yeah, I seen the images and the. That's why we got on the subject of Alien in the first place, because. Everybody's trying to compare it to Ripley, I guess. Oh, no. Just some people saying, oh, if she came out today, people would say she doesn't look good enough, which is bullshit. She looks like she is a woman. She's not a man in a wig, which no. is what all these characters that they're putting out look like. They look like some kind of Dylan Mulvaney hybrid. And if they have a problem with that, I don't really care. Oh, that's yeah. That was the other thing. Like. That, that was the other thing that at. the documentary put out. I'm not into men. They kept so. trying to make it like nobody would listen to Ripley. It's like, well, nobody would listen to anybody. They did everything against protocol. That's why Alien happened the way it did. <laughs> and it's funny. Every time you see somebody defending this bullshit, it's always somebody with pronouns in their bio, flags. Yeah. All, every time. Z-Zams. Every single time. Yeah. So it's polarized, just like most things. But I'm sorry. I don't want to look at a dude in a wig. Make her a woman. I didn't say she had to be super hot. I just wanted well, to look like a fucking woman. Well, the, the, don't don't make her look like. Don't give her the haircut of the band Slade. <laughs> well, and didn't uh, didn't they show what the actual model for the character looked yes. like? And she looks nothing like this as usual. Yeah, yes, uh, we actually have uh, have. Uh, I was looking for some some negative stories uh, or no, well, negative, but. <sighs> I wasn't looking for negative stories, but that's kind of like what they are. Uh, they are negative because the fans are being pointed in a negative view across the board here. Fans are so horrible. Here we go. For, one of the guys, yeah, that's the that's the guy defending it. One of his yeah. uh, one of his defenses is because somebody said something about him getting fired, and he said, "I won't get fired. I'm too good at sucking dick to get fired." He said I that think or... he said Flacio or something, but oh yeah, he did God, say you could serious? go to his timeline. You'll find it. I think wow. I retweeted it actually. I, I, like, okay. never, uh, like, I don't uh, think that's the win that you think it is. No, no, not really. So this I, is the actress here. And then this is the actor that's in there. So the actor looks exactly like his character. Surprised they kept a ginger in there actually. But so this is the character like, that's weird because she this actress actually looks like mediterranean or something like that unless it's just the yeah, light she's beautiful i'd be fine with why didn't you you're already what's the point she of was already her, kind of diverse that's my what's point. the point of paying for her face if you're not going to use it why are you paying for her likeness if you're not going to use she it? actually looks like they a, didn't use it they gave her spock's eyebrows that chad jawline a chin butt a bigger chin her lips are smaller her nose looks like it's been busted three times her eyes are bigger too like, why are you doing this? Well, there's no guarantee that the first version of it, because the game's been in development for a long time, didn't look like her. And then they brought in some consultancy that said, oh, no, no, she's look, she's looking way too good. Change these things. Uh, she's too they, good looking. The, the original version of, 
the original version of that character might have actually looked like her. We don't know. Uh, what I think is so unbelievable is because, uh, because yeah, uh, the the actress or the model is one um, Humberly Gonzalez. So uh, based on that name, she would... That would explain the skin color. Exactly, yeah. Um, what what they a, did, yeah. seemingly, they have made her a white trailer trash who is inbred and addicted to fentanyl. And was a dude at some point. As a dude, tur transition. So it's Ma'am Solo. It's Ma'am Solo. I mean, might as well be. It's got the same outfit, color scheme. Even has the same gun. The same way that the belt he wears is kind of at a slant. It's fucking Han Solo's entire look. Bit of hip has a bit of hip there. The yeah, thing. bit of a bulge. So, yeah, Flash wasn't lying. Here he says right here, I have too many friends for that and give amazing head. He ain't talking about licking lower lips, I can tell you that. Yeah. So is that him things. basically saying all you got to do to get ahead in Hollywood is suck some dick? Sounds like it. There was a oh, video man. of the uh, models that they originally used for Andromeda, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, and they were all stunning. And then they got de-stunned or incre the stunning was increased, but in the wrong way. And they, you got all these really, you know, uninteresting female characters in the, in the video, but and in the game, but they started with gorgeous individuals. It seems to be a trend. Well, they're, they're saying it's to attract the trans gays. Yeah, that's a oh, massive five crowd. of them instead yeah, of the, a, the male gaze massive, massive crowd. oh yeah, i see what you mean not g-a-y-s g-a-z yeah e. who finds this shit attractive though that's the other thing i wonder because gay men the, not really and the lesbian developers not or, really uh, or chasers that's what they call them dudes that like chicks with dicks there's not that many people i would bet you that are because this That's is what the, the trans community calls them there you go. swipe right chasers you go. Swipe how many right. stories have i run into now where you've had a gay couple or a lesbian couple where one will switch their genders and then the other the other person doesn't want them anymore and they're like well why not it's because i'm gay it's because i'm lesbian i'm not gonna be with you when you're the opposite sex right so they've come to the point where yes they will accept you as that other sex straight up to the point where they're no longer interested in you because you are a dude now or a woman now, right? Like that's what's going on here. So who is attracted to these people? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Why do they think this is attractive? Because it's not most gay guys that I know still find women attractive in a way. It's not a sexual way, but they love to look at like Marilyn Monroe and busty women and see them in their outfits and stuff like that. And they wish they looked like that and stuff like that, which is where this stems from. But it's partially, look, I'm going to say it and it's fucking controversial, but it's partially coming from a place of a, of, of, of a problem that you have not dealt with one way or another, right? It's something is not working right in your system if you think this is what's going to fix your problem. I, I think the cleave is in left versus right. Well, and it, what I'm it, talking about is that a lot of people are coming out now and saying that these transitions, especially among younger folks, are not what they were what they were sold. Right. And I'm not going to get too deep into it because it's going to get us in trouble. Yeah, that's another topic. But like at the same time, why are you trying to what what about these people tells you that this is what they're attracted to? I guess is my main question I'm getting to. But it's my point. My main point is, is gay dudes in invasion of schools. And that's, my, that's, that's what I'm saying, though, Paul, is that entire school of thought. So you're because you leave left or you cleave right. And that's where you that's that's your battle lines well because gay dudes still like buff dudes right they don't yeah. want some femi looking dude just like women who are lesbian generally still that's like not true the masculine like buff dudes want to be usually or something it depends oh, but they still no but you're still gonna sit there my point is, is you just... take my point is this you stick four gay guys in a room four gay, five gay guys in a room four out of five of those gay guys are all gonna at least agree that henry cavill's sexy if not all fucking five, that's my point. You put them. Can we get back to chin, uh, please, chin queen? Instead of talking about the preferences yeah. of gay men, 
Please, I don't care. They Somebody do that. You're turning because this into a strange are, Midnight's Edge. N- neither of us are experts <laughs> in that area. We, we don't qualify. That I think. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Yes, strong chinned women. And, and I guess the point is that there seems to be a bit of, uh, of pushback now already that I'm sure the game publishers are not happy to hear about what have you heard anything yellow flash on on uh, this uh, beginning wave of pushback yeah a lot of these developers and game journalists they're really trying to draw a line here and i find it fascinating because AAA games are so expensive to make mm-hmm. so you're out here being hostile towards customers that star wars game i guarantee you is dead dead on arrival you think it so, probably right? was it probably was dead on arrival before like even if she was attractive because it's a there's other things going on with it it's a live service game yes uh it's always online so and it's got a 132 two dollar price tag just to play the game early uh now is it yeah. there's two so there's a hundred dollar price tag just to play the game early so are, are, uh, and then there's I'm wrong. I've, I've heard that it's like star um starfield where you've you, you get a disc with almost nothing on it and you, yeah, you have to have an internet connection to download. An internet connection to actually load the game onto your system, but then afterwards you're able to play the game, aren't you? Yeah, you can play the game, but it's a, without so being online. I mean, most of the games that you buy that are physical still have to download stuff, but some of them, I mean, you could still kind of play a fucked up, broken version off the disc. Sure. Yeah. But this trend to give you a DVD that's only got a stub on it that then forces you to download the entire game is bullshit. That yeah. Well, I do we have another name for that stub, that broken game that you refer to Yellow Flash. It's called a demo or a beta <laughs> because it's nowhere <laughs> ready for release and that is my pet peeve with all modern day games that they release them before they're ready to be released, have all paying customers be beta testers. And like Dragon's Dogma 2. Afterwards. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a good example of that game's broken. The day I think one it runs patch. better now. I, I don't, I'm not bothered by the day one patch. That doesn't bother me um, because we now expect it. But the problem, no, I but... think, is not owning a version on your disc that is actually playable. It's funny because like Nintendo doesn't Nintendo most of the time you put it in, it just there is no update because they release a, a game that works. That's crazy. what I'm saying. Crazy, crazy concept. I disagree with that. I think there should be at least a month where they have beta testers. That's where you work out all the kinks. And then Nintendo does that. That's what like, Nintendo does. Yeah. But there's also something called what I call when we were developing games, pencils down. At some point you gotta ship something. And so you bust your ass and you well that's where the beta there. testers come in you get about yeah, 100 you can people only in a beta group. test so much and these online games you find more of the problems when you do mass uh you know the battlefield ran into it which one was it uh yellow uh battlefield three where they actually decided that the game was so busted that they opened up the beta testing system to the public and it, it they ended up fixing it fairly quickly um it was a, it wasn't a a bad change. In that's fair, purpose. but that should be the exception and not the fucking norm. Oh, I, I oh, totally agree thing. with you, but the games, number one, are unbelievably complicated, like way, way beyond the ability for any beta tester to actually beta test them. Uh, they just need to have a different methodology for, for getting them. Getting Bethesda's them pretty guilty of this. <laughs> oh, I'm talking talk, about like the Skyrim oh, and they all come busted fallout. Oh, <laughs> I mean, how often, and broke. Here's my the, point. Though. The gamers have to fix it with mods. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like you get, we've gotten to a point now where like, sure, if it was one or two out of the 10, every 10 games that comes out that need some updates here and there that they get found out after some gameplay by customers. Fine. That, that I understand. But when we've had how many games that come out where people are saying they're literally broken, right and they have to be like it has become more like nine out of ten games it seems like now Uh, it's like what games haven't had to have a bunch of fixes well that's where i'm coming from i I think they're hiring incompetent programmers uh for for one thing there's a video out there 
of the gentleman who was responsible for um, Fallout New Vegas. I don't know if you've seen the video where he talked to his own developers on not on Fallout, but um, some future game that he was leading. And he was saying, you know, why does this change that I'm asking for? Why, why are you requesting four weeks to do it? I could do it in 40 minutes, uh, you know, programming it myself, which freaked everybody else out. It just seems to me that the quality of programmers out there are, are bad. That's where I'm kind of coming from, Paul, is it almost feels like they're not doing the work on their end to begin with. Or these no. games are just so big and the people that are working on them are so scattered out that they're not working in enough tandem to where, how is it we're having so many of these games come out broken lately? And, and I don't know whether it's the same now as in the past, but in the 90s when I was going to the GamersCon convention, uh, there's a certain level of programmer that can do the work but the big labels always were searching for a handful, and there might have been only four at the time, super programmers. And, and these are people who were geniuses, and the gaming companies fought over these four individuals, and I met two of them. Uh, and they would be paid just enormous sums of money to come in to fix something because they were geniuses. They were far, uh, everyone acknowledged them as being far and above better than any of the programmers that you would normally hire. So they were hired guns and they just went to the highest bidder. And I don't know whether that's the same now, but it was very interesting meeting these guys. Interesting. Well, let's see what the audience is talking about here for now. Um, let's see here. Um, because I know they're talking a little bit about the game stuff. In fact, Mr. Tickle Trunk over on the Rumble side sent in $5. Thank you so much. So I want to point out Digital Extreme Studios. They started going woke, but pulled back to being a normal company again. I got back into their flagship game, Warframe, because it's important to reward reformers. Hmm. So that's a that's a good kind of place to kind of come from this. Like, So how long much longer do you guys think we're going to be dealing with this dei shit in these games and, and in general because i mean the, this is where i go broke well that's what i'm saying we've noticed a bit of a like with the, the gamers though unlike hollywood and other stuff like that they can make a difference quicker and that's where i'm wondering if we're going to see a, a shift backlog back. of woke games they have to get through yeah well they're just going to reject them all I mean, um, we're already looking at Suicide Squad's getting shut down. It's online stuff by next year or whatever. Wow. So. Yeah, they're saying 2025 because, I mean, that he just had new DLC drop. The player count went up to like 1,500 players for a couple of days, and now it's back to like 400 people a day. Wow. Really? Yeah, so that game's, that game's done. Oh, my God. You're talking a massive loss of money with that game. We'll never find out how much, but I bet you that game has lost hundreds of millions of dollars because it takes hundreds of millions of dollars to make a game like yeah. that. Fuck them. Good. That's what you get. Yeah. And then we've got, uh, let's see here, uh, DCB Titan says, as long as we don't get another Ultima Ascension, uh, I'm not sure what that's all about because I'm not a gamer, but do, do any of you guys know what Ultima is? Ultima no. Ascension is. I know, I'm I've assuming it's it. a game. I, I, yeah, it is say. a game. I've never played it, but it's a game. Uh, then we got uh, Glade Riven who sends in a member chat and says most modern programmer are script kiddies, stitching together pre-written code. Yeah. Few actually understand software architecture. That's a very good shit. point. That makes sense. I can see what you're kind of getting oh, at yeah, there. I've I've experienced that. I mean, again, I've been involved with companies that did major programming work for an awful lot of stuff. And, and uh, even in the corporate world, uh, uh, a lot of the programming is uh, you're, you're grabbing stuff offline and, and sticking it in. I mean, that's a, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, script kiddies. Yeah, I, I, I would say, yeah. 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 So that's, I think that's a really good, really good point. I was very lucky with the one game that we managed to release jewels of the Oracle where mm -hmm. we had, I mean, the programmers we had on board were unbelievable. They, they were just the smartest people, not socially well adjusted. I had to pull two of them apart because they were 
beating the crap of each other. Well, as, as much as two programmers with silky smooth hands could beat each other up. But yeah, you know, that was funny. I took him to the bar. I went, you two, stop it. <laughs> okay, I'm dragging you to the bar, getting you drunk. Say, say, say a sorry to each other, and then we'll go back and work on the game. But uh, yeah, it's a very, they're a very different group of people, programmers. We got Dark King, who's been a member for 36 months. Wow, thank you so much. It says, advantage for gamers compared to the movie fans is that games have a better path for indie games, uh, both in development and distribution, small teams, Steam, uh, GOG, and no must have the cinema experience guff. Um, yeah, especially with stuff like Steam now, I can see where it really has made it a lot easier for gamers because oh. it's cut out the middleman as far as like, I mean, yeah, you're still technically but it's, you using don't really it. own the game though. True. But PC That's gamers thing. have been dealing with this for a long time. Yeah. It's more, it's more so new to the console side, the, the mm-hmm. loss of physical they still make box pc games but it's just a it's always just been a ticket the disc mm-hmm. has always been worthless like because once you use your key it, you can't do anything else with the disc you can't give it to someone yeah yeah that's true that's why but, i've never liked steam, it. steam has proven to be good hosts yeah i like steam that's where if i that's what i, I use i won't buy a game off of the epic store no i can tell no. you that yeah. And then we've got, uh, let's see here. Uh, try to st- stick with the gaming stuff for now, and then we'll get into the other ones. Captain Spire sends in five and says, I still play DOS RTS games. No DLS, no paid for patches. Just a genuine game that entertains and gives me joy. Yeah. I, I mean, and I get certain things are going to always have to have some kind of online capabilities, or at least that's what they're built for. But I kind of miss the days of when you could just throw in the disc and it would do its thing. Hey, you know what? The kids out there should try an Infocom game. They're available online. Text it. Well, that's try to get well, try to get your head around that, kids. <laughs> well, that's a little too old school for probably most kids. But yeah, I mean, but really, we've talked a, a little bit. What a mind rush those things are! They're clever as as heck. But like Andre and I have discussed this, and I don't know. If, I think you've been here too, and Paul. Maybe this was even on a show where you were with us, Flash, where we talked about. Uh, a lot of the classic games are going to be saved by these gamers archiving them online and stuff like that because well, the studio the sure that, as hell ain't doing it. Yeah, the ones that were going to be saved already have been archived, and the ones that haven't, they're probably mostly lost. And and the irony is that it's relatively modern games, which are the ones that are lost, like mobile games and stuff like that. Uh, and I, I know that with, for instance, the games that I have had a hand in developing uh, for a company that is now defunct. These are games that were out on uh, on iPhone and uh, uh, and um, uh, the the Android store. But since the company is defunct, they haven't been updated to the most recent code, which means that they're no longer in the store. And I don't even know that anyone that installed them back in the day can can use them anymore for that same reason. This is the problem with everything always having to be online and always up to standards. The moment it, for whatever reason, this is no longer updated to that, it's just going to disappear. That's a ton of indie games lost right there. But also of like games that were put on on some console. Not not every console emulate as easily. Especially like the newer ones. I mean, there's something right. like the majority of games, and especially newer games. By newer, I mean like of the past 15 years, they're the ones that are lost. Not the big ones, but the smaller you may not have heard about, but where you can find the true classics. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, let's see here. What else we got on the gaming side of things? Well, this isn't this is about the whole ma'am solo thing. D Piner or Pinner? Uh sends in five and says someone did a side-by-side between ma'am solo and <laughs> damon puppet from team america they look the oh, same. Yeah, yeah that's great i, I don't know who that. originally did it but i saw a critical drinker had uh posted it yeah. there's also one with the guy from the warriors oh god because she looks Blay-ay, like him. that guy yeah. yeah yep i always forget his name as an actor he's great but uh yeah uh, from the original crow and stuff like that yeah yeah indeed 
And then we got Ministry of Wrong. Think who sends in 499 says they're actually doing us a favor, making game characters ugly. It's an instant red flag that saves us money. They're the non binary in the coal mine. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's where DI Detective also comes in handy as well. If somebody asked me if I was going to play it, and I said, Hell, I'm not buying this. I'd rather go back and play that terrible NES X Men game again than touch Star Wars Outlaws. And for those of you who've played that, you know exactly how bad that game is. I have not played it. Oh, it's awful. Well, awful. you should also just play the, the, the X-Men games on the Sega Mega Drive, which are pretty <laughs> decent. And, oh, and yeah, the, the, Sega, Ge- the Sega, there's some good stuff in the 16-bit era. There's that Sega there's Genesis X-Men. There's good stuff in the there's 16-bit X-Men era. There's X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. That's a yeah, great exactly. one. Uh, that's my favorite X-Men game, actually, yeah. Mutant Apocalypse. Yeah. You see, that's kind of like the thing, that in the... What people have to forget about the don't forget uh, or tend to forget about the 16-bit uh, era, the latter part of it. That's where 2D gaming was perfected. The now, absolute best of 2D games, and even some early uh, side scrollers and uh, and adventure games and what well, you you name it. It's going to be see, in the in 16-bit era. I see Wolfman kind of digging on LJN games now. I have to defend the NES Wolverine game. It's not the greatest game, but man, the soundtrack to that game is so amazing. So I got to defend the Wolverine one a little bit. Plus, it's got that amazing Jim Lee box art. That's bad, though, when the best thing, uh, you, the best attribute of a, of a game is the box art. Although Jim well, Lee it was a, it was a very good box art. It was a comic cover first, and they repurposed it. Yeah. It's like Wolverine 27, I think. It's around 20 something. I did that with a number of uh, of, uh, of of uh, video game covers. But yeah, I love of them. them. I'm surprised the, they got away with like the first NES Turtles game was a cover. It's the second print issue four. Yeah. Uh, the Fall of the Foot Plan game uses the movie adaptation too. The comic cover for that for that uh, comic. I have yeah, some good, uh, the European version of uh, the the Hyperstone Heist, um, and uh, and I'm surprised they they got away with uh, with a few other very obvious copyright infringements there. I mean that Wolverine soundtrack though is really good. Love that yeah, soundtrack. Were some amazing soundtracks even back uh, back in the day, uh, but on this uh, on the note of this uh, this. Um, uh, super chat from the Ministry of uh, Wrong Think about making game characters ugly. Tom, I put a, a link up behind the scenes here in the private chat. Can you put that up on the screen? Because we have another game to talk about today, namely Tomb Raider Chronicles. That's oh, that's a ta- that's the tabletop game. Yeah, yeah. What can you tell us about but- this one? So this this tabletop company, Evil Hat Productions, I think the name of it is, uh, also known for their tabletop game, Thirsty Lesbian Pirates, or something. My favorite game. Are you serious? Yeah, big, big, uh, big hit that game. <laughs> Thirsty Lesbian something. That's that's the name of it. I can't remember, but okay. This sounds like like a porn title from like the nineties or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, now you can tabletop role play it. So girls gone wild. Yeah, uh, they so what the notable thing here is that they actually worked with Crystal Dynamics and they signed off on it. So this whole game is about her fi- being a truth teller and uh, stopping colonialism. No longer is is Laura Croft going to have artifacts on her mantle. She's telling the truth now. So she's not Tomb Raider. Is what you're saying like this is stupid. Like you're turning everything that the game was about on its head. No one's going to buy. Maybe this she'll game. turn into a dude and become womb Raider. Yeah. Thirsty sword. Yeah. Thirsty sword. Lesbians is the name of it. Thank you. DC. Are Batman. you fucking kidding me? Is that a real thing? It's a real thing. Yep. I, I, I showed it in my video saying. on this. Uh, again, that's a what the most, fuck is this world I've coming to? That is like 10 things today where I swear I've got to still be fucking sleeping because that can't be a real goddamn thing, but it is. Somebody at Crystal Dynamics saw that thirsty sword lesbian said they have to make our 
our Warcraft table. Apparently, Crystal Dynamics is one of the mo most woke outfits out there. With a title like that, they better be. No, no, I mean, like Crystal Dynamics, the company that originally distributed, they didn't make the most recent modern Tomb Raider. The remaster, no. The remasters. Well, I'm, I'm they, talking But they, they slapped a warning label yeah. on it. Yeah. Because they're ashamed of it. Her, uh, Lo uh, Melanie Mack and Razor Fist both said that they, they have resentment towards the old ones and they didn't want that to come out. They did not want that to come out, and uh, that's mostly because they have their androgynous Lara Croft reboot coming out soon. And they want to prop that up and take people's kind of take that game out of your out of your mind for a little bit. Yeah, because this is where we were told that they would be going back to her classic look, but I guess that only it's not her classic to look. the outfit. That's a dude cosplaying as Laura Croft. Yeah, I was about to say, like those arms, that those are some mighty masculine arms right there. And by that I mean, um, if a woman goes to the gym and she buffs up, which I fully support, many women are afraid of doing that because they're afraid that they'll get really bulky and look like this. No, 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 no. If you're a woman, you have natural estrogen. That's not going to happen. Well, they will, Those but that's like after right they there, got. They would look like that with a pump, but it would go away. Like it, it's not going to stick. It doesn't yeah. stick. But that woman right there—that's a very masculine build of those arms right there. The face isn't like if you compare that to how it looks in the reboot game. Like this one, they still kind of gave her a little feminine look here in the face. The the official reboot character has that jawline and everything. There's pictures of her with the hair, like somebody swapped out Laura Croft's hair and put Leon S. Kennedy's hair on it, and it's a dude. <laughs> I wish I could find that picture. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to this shit other than stuff that'll get me in trouble, so I'm just going to... Hey, you know what? Uh, you know what? Uh, let them do what they're going to do and let the market decide. I would say that the bigger issue here, other than uh, than what was done to Laura Croft physically, is what was done to her mentally, because she is no longer a Tomb Raider. She has realized the error of her ways, and she will now go around practicing that treasures must be returned to where they came from, from people who can't preserve them in the first place. Uh, and that all other Tomb Raiders need to stop what they're doing. So she's now a social justice activist. To me, that is, if anything, the greater sin than what was done to, to her physically. Because if she physically had been the original um, character, that wouldn't have helped when they have subverted her this badly in terms of her personality. Because even if this is a tabletop, it's adhering to all of the Xbox DEI criteria, every single one. She's not sexy, and it's all about DEI all the way. Well, if they, they should come out with Untomb Raider, where she goes into the museum, steals the artifact, and returns it to the soil where it was first dug up. Yeah, exactly. Be, so the local populace can destroy it. That would be exciting. Or, or sell it in the local yeah. bazaar or something. That's, that's right. No, because, I mean, this is a point that Mr. H made, and uh, he's not wrong. Much of the history that we have today that has been preserved has been preserved by the Brits, the British, the British Museum. And if, were it not for them, much of it would have been lost. Because many places around the world, the people who happen to occupy the lands right now, aren't necessarily interested in preserving ancient prehistory. Quite the contrary. They're just trying know. to rewrite history. I, I know. ISIS did a very nice job of reconfiguring that giant monument in Syria. Yeah, I see their perfect example. Uh, this is one of the a a oldest temples in, in civilization. What yeah. they do blew it. It was a huge hell. loss. Same thing that the Taliban did with uh, with uh, some statues there. Also, 
older than, than, than history itself, and they blew it to smithereens. And that's exactly what I mean. And also when you had like the riots in, in Egypt in around 2012 or something like that, local populace stormed the, uh, the, the uh, Egyptian museum and even decapitated a mummy. So, um, yeah, not everything should maybe be returned. Because not everyone who, who occupies the historic lands right now are interested in preserving the history that goes with those lands. So I think that this game right here, it's bad in everything. It's bad when it comes to, to Lara Croft, but it's even worse when it comes to her philosophy because her philosophy is one step short of rewriting history. And so, but Yellow Flash, this game right here, is this something that is seeking crowdfunding right now? Is that how we understand it? I don't think so. I haven't, I think it's just going to go to stores. Well, I hope Amazon. it will collect, uh, collect um, uh, dust on shelves there. A lot of these table, and I don't know about this. Oh, you one didn't even show. You didn't even show the Burger King's Kid Club that she's in there with. Uh, no, you, I don't have that. You can't but, see uh, the. You can't see the person of color lady who's also fat. And if you got those, it, she has those two things. I don't know what you call them—the jumper legs, so they can run when you're missing your legs. Um, I don't even know what you call. Yeah, them. I don't remember. You have the, to get Mark. I know what you're talking you're about. The but... Blades, you mean? Yeah, the blades. She's got those yeah. running blades. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But anyway, no, I see like, on the webpage. Uh, crowdfunding for Tomb Raider Shadow. I was just going to say. Oh, it yep. is crowdfunding? Can you send it's that? I was just going to say begins. most of those are crowdfunded and they don't, yeah, they don't go to stores. like that. Crowdfunding begins in 2025. Oh, I can't wait to follow that crowdfund. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. So this is basically just like announcing it and uh, that it's developing. So they're going to try to diversify it as much as possible to make it appeal to as many as humanly possible by making it as niche as possible so that just 10 people will like it in the end and that's when they're going to go live within 2025 this one is going to be fun to follow yeah i was that was what i was going to say is 90 percent of these tabletop games are usually fan made in some way and most of the ones i've seen aren't all that successful and we're talking about some that are pretty popular ips and aren't all that successful usually so i wonder how much it'll need to make to get funded i'm cable top game they're not yeah. as very expensive that's the beauty of it yeah printing's expensive it is well it, on a level of compared to like say doing like a video project or something like that um it's probably on the, a little bit more expensive than know. a comic all book all that digital distribution mm -hmm. well it's still got well you, when you're doing documentaries and other things you still got to pay to film stuff and all that kind of stuff it costs a lot of money like i'm part of a lot of the we were part of don't even use film anymore what i'm talking about is like we we were part of like the creative uh vc documentaries like the uh in search of stuff those take a lot of money to go out and shoot that stuff like you have to have them you know fly places or fly oh yeah for the and travel and stuff yeah that's all different. that kind of shit adds up to, to a people. point to where like what i'm saying is like but you can make a movie you could make a movie in the woods or a desert i mean like it's still gonna cost you quite cheap. a bit Here's my point is, is one of these tabletop games probably costs maybe 10, 15 percent more than it would to cost to, to print a comic book. That would be my guess, because it's all cardboard. It's all printing. It's all, you know, it's just your basic stuff. It's not like you're mass producing like discs or something like that that are where you're going to have to buy a certain amount. I doubt it's that expensive, but not too many of them get funded all the way or are that popular from what I've noticed. Some of them are OK, but. I've, I've seen some pretty up, popular depending on IPs. how many so that's a hard cover and all that stuff so probably like thirty thousand dollars to print that for the whole thing yeah yeah because it's got hard it's a hard cover yeah well, that's what i'm saying a little bit more than what of what you would pay for a for, for well, a comic book there's hard cover comic books tom well if you do that it's the same thing then yeah there you go so anyway that being said is there anything more to say on the lara croft thing before we get 
Back into Perfect. super chats here. On. All right, let's get back into the super chats here. We got Hypergyver 2. I think we got this one already. We or did, yeah. Yeah, you, we got this one. We did. Yeah, Chaos Sonic 1 says, Ben Affleck's kid came out as trans at his grandpa's funeral, and the kid makes me sick wanting to be the center of attention at his grandfather's funeral. I've noticed this is a trend. Like the times that people choose to do this shit, but yeah, I'm not going to get into that anymore. This morning, or Andre will kill me. Pilgrim <laughs> sends in two and says, I miss love American style on Fridays. I'm old. <laughs> Paul gets it. Uh, yeah. I, and the song is, uh, you know, as soon as you mention it, you can remember the song. The Kermit theme. Miss. Love American style. Kermit the Miss is a uh, chattel. This man gets it. The Hollywood ignores him. Stupid but true. Hey, Chato, man of the people and common sense. Anyone? Hollywood? It's okay. Hollywood is not calling me, and I'm fine. And Kerm the Myth also says that Chato rocks. Yay. Mm. Yeah. Yay. Well, that's <laughs> usually, you know, it's the only way that I can survive the day is get in the chair and just rock back. It's rock it. back and forth. It's soothing. It is. Yeah. Well, man, force. Walt Man 4 sends in 999 says more than more on that quiet on the set docuseries. One episode talked about Brian Peck, the dialogue coach accused of SO, which the series revealed the John Doe was Drake Bell and Disney hired Peck after his release. Yeah, I heard about this. Uh, I don't know if you guys are keeping up with any nothing of this. About this. Um, I mean, basically, uh, this individual who was. Uh, I believe convicted of uh, something doing stuff to Drake Bell. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, after they got out, ended up getting hired by Disney of all people. Well, that I think is one of the boxes. I'm sure it is. It's, you put that on a resume at Disney. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, then we got you, you hire ex cons, I and mean, that's a good thing. You get like, uh, you get well, not just any ex cons for that. Yeah diddler ex-cons that's the thing and that's yeah, not the first time how many of them have been busted on like because there was that person that was in the marvel movie the ant-man movie there was um there was like two or three other people that were that aren't even well, i'm not even talking about the parks people and the stuff that get busted all the time i'm talking about actual people that were on screen roles or involved in productions there's been at least three or four in the last couple of years but anyway moose sends in five and says from a psychological perspective, why do game developers keep pushing DEI? Almost no new games are fun and full of woke nonsense nobody wants. Well, I'm sure they'll start to veer away from it sooner than later, but like I, I don't remember who brought it up earlier. I think it was Andre or Paul that said, you know, we've got how many years of games that have been, de been in development that we got to get through to get on the other end of this, too. It's similar with Hollywood, but the yeah. games take even longer in most cases. Yeah. Yellow Flash, what's your thoughts on this? Why do game developers keep pushing, uh, pushing the AI? What what's psychologically Money. wrong with them? Why do they want this? Money. ESG money. Yeah. And they and all of them are are woke. They think that they're doing it for like a a better world. It's a crusade. Yeah. So that means they're not doing it for money. They're doing it because well, they're, they're going to get that funding. They're doing it for it the cost. Sides. That and you have the other people who are using it as employment as well. Yeah. Like, you know, they're like, oh, well, you don't have enough black people or whatever here. And then they push that. So then they get hired that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, to me, it's like, yeah. Well, uh, let's hear what, uh, what, uh, Mr. Chato have to, to, to say on it. What psychologically, what drives them to do this TEI stuff? So, uh, one bit of information that I got from an HR professional. Uh, again, in the corporate world, and some of this, I think, transfers over to Hollywood and also game development, is that we had a jump in terms of the kinds of people uh, the corporations were hiring. Uh, there, you had the boomers who were running these very, I'd say, conservative organizations, but then the internet came, and then everyone was talking about social media and, and um, uh, getting audiences through uh, what was the, what's the term that they used for social media marketing was became really hot. The next group of people after the boomers knew nothing about social media marketing. So they jumped over them to get to the millennials and the Gen Z's who were part of this, you know, hip young thing. 
social media marketing and suddenly corporations, conservative corporations were infused with a, a generation jump of young people that could at least talk the talk about social media and no one in the corporation really knew what they were doing, how they behaved, why they were different culturally. Uh, and that's what actually uh, kickstarted a lot of this generational change. Uh, and, and these individuals were uh, also uh, social activists and the corporations didn't know what to do. And, and rather than, I'd say, using the term fighting it, they acquiesced to this uh, generation of individuals who, rather than wanting to uh, become part of the company, were more interested in bringing their collegial atmosphere from their colleges into work. They didn't like the way work worked. And HR and the corporate bigwigs just bowed over and said, yeah, sure, bring your college-like atmosphere into our corporations. And that's actually one of the generators, the drivers of what we are dealing with right now. Whether that uh, affected game development companies, I can't say. I, I can just talk to how corporate America has been twisted by this jump in generation. Yeah, there's a, like you all hit on it. It's really the perfect toxic mix. Yeah, because from a corporate point of view, you have the ESG, mm -hmm. where and we've seen this, where you have the likes of Microsoft. Yep. Who are like, okay, here are and we did the video on this a couple of weeks ago when they when they made public their list of demands for, for publishers. They've had those for the past five years. If mm -hmm. your game ain't woke as hell, it's not gonna be released on the Xbox. So if you're a game developer and you want your game to be released on Xbox, you're gonna have to wokeify it. And Let's just say that the other platforms don't have the same requirements. They do, or similar ones. Uh, I just think that Xbox happens to be more extreme. What you're going to do then, rather than make like three different games, you'll wokeify the game for release so it can be released on the Xbox. And instead of doing three different ones, you'll put that wokeified version across on everyone. Because that way, you get paid because it's going to be released. Whereas if you don't do it, you have an indie game that Xbox wants nothing to do with. Are you going to gamble everything on Nintendo and uh, and PlayStation or Steam? That may not work out. You may not uh, have the chance to do that. So you, as a developer, may be forced to to put it out there if you want to stay in the big leagues mm -hmm. or even the medium leagues. This is the the problem with ESG. You are forced to occupy, and part of that is. Oh, you need to now wokeify the company. You need to hire activists. You can't be a small little studio of white people who loves games. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't work with a company like that. You need to bring in a couple of activists. Oh, you did? Well, that's not enough. You need to hire the likes of Sweet Baby Inc. as well. And your new hires, they're now toxins destroying the company from within. That's what you were talking about, Paul. Uh, that yeah. they are forced in the name of ESG to make these diversity hires, and then the people they hire and they bring in, well, there are many enough of them to transform the company culture, and then the hive has been taken over. The invasion is complete. And, and, and my point is that the barbarians were already at the gate pre-ESG, pre, -ESG, pre yeah, they all were of there. this, and they... Uh, they uh, got the soil prepared for all of this. That's my point. No one's talked about that. Yeah. It's not sudden. It's not a sudden change. It's this. It's this hiring practice, social media kind of. All all of those people who were basically talking about. Oh, you have to open the door a little bit. You have correct. To, like, there, there's like. Exactly. Every game, every game has a white male. Hey, you need some, just a little bit. Just, just give us the little finger. Just give us the little finger. Throw us a little bone here. That was the barbarians at the gate. Correct. And the moment when you open the door, you let the barbarians in. Yeah. You just didn't know it. Yeah, and then they transformed exactly you right. from within and they ruined the company. It's kind of like the same thing that has happened in many like Western western societies with with immigration and stuff open a little bit and suddenly society is completely 
fallen apart because of it, which many European nations can uh, can speak to to as well. It's like the same thing. It's you just, the, when the barbarians are at the gate, you don't know it, because then you just have to throw them a little bone. Then the door is opened. That's the psychological perspective. Do it little by little until the takeover is complete and you have no idea and you have lost control of your own company. That's what happened. Yellow Flash, anything to chime on with that or add to that before we move on? I think you 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 hit it on the head. All right. Uh, then the Chaos Sonic says, Andre, I don't blame you for not knowing, as everyone thought it was jump on that battle. We all <laughs> jumped on it. That fucking ruined my life. I'm not, I'm not even joking. Uh, Matthias Fredriksson says for 20 Swedish krona, binging X Men 97 and positively surprised by it. Yeah, I've heard that. I There's actually that. some episode people calling. Five. Go ahead. So episode five was really good. I just watched it yesterday. I'm surprised. Usually by now, these Disney Plus shows fall apart. This one is still going strong. Well, I guess Hawkeye he fell the, apart in the last episode, so yeah. I, I guess the writer left his uh, gay shit at the door. Here's that's I'm glad you because that was what I was going to say is I've seen there's already a petition online for people calling for him to be brought back. I think he should be brought back. He did a good job. We'll see if it holds anything up. Anything coming almost, out? Yeah, we're still waiting. <laughs> nothing's come out besides what we already know so i'm still waiting to see the rest of the season before you know final judgment but i mean based on what i've seen uh he said because i had no expect very very low expectations because you see this guy's private profile his instagram basically and he's got pictures of him like giving the camera middle finger and saying fuck trump all this tds shit and nine times out of ten when you see something like that usually what they make is dog shit but uh he was able to leave all of his shit at the door and so far has made a pretty damn good show. So he's, uh, he proved me wrong so far. We'll see. But yeah, the fifth episode was really, really good. And, uh, we'll see how the show sticks to landing. Well, and that's what I'm saying is we have, here we are, what, four, some weeks out, five weeks out now from when he was fired. And we still have yet to have anything surface that is remotely that bad so just I the more stuff understand the more stuff has been well, like, no, no, no i'm talking about that he's it. gay with wolverine <laughs> like there's a scene in the fourth episode where they get uh they're stuck in a hallucination and his hallucination is him going into the bathroom where wolverine is taking a shower <laughs> and he says he turns into I think he turned into wool. I can't remember who he turns into. And he's like, you need some help reaching those hard to reach places. You know, you need a hand getting those hard to reach places. So it's it's heavily implied that Morph wants to fuck Wolverine, which we figured was going to happen anyway, one way or another. But still, that being said, like Wolverine though is is very much into Jean Grey. Uh, he was uh, flirting with her in episode five. There's actually a good scene between her, between Jean and Logan. In, uh, what i was five. referring to was the actual real life stuff i'm talking about all we've seen is that you know we they knew he had an only fans that wasn't a secret um there was those couple pictures of him those weren't a secret uh we have nothing else that has come out about this guy so it's leaning more into at least my opinion that he just didn't conform to what they wanted and he probably was sticking to his guns on most things morph was probably the one thing that, that he you know, conformed with them on. And that wasn't enough for them, I think at this point. And they kept using, he was difficult to work with more than anything. See, and that to me spells somebody who refuses to change the source material, because that's what we keep hearing every time somebody's fired. Like, cause he was like with Henry Cavill on the Witcher thing. That's where he came from. And he quit there or got fired there. I can't remember which one it was because he didn't want to conform to their changing of the story. He thought they should stick to the, to the, uh, source material so yeah it's obvious he was a fan um he's been going through multiple storylines like the mutant massacre at genosha uh the inferno stuff he's been doing a uh, storm losing her powers which is going to go into i forget that guy's name it's like the abyss the abysmal or something uh he's like uh he's kind of like a 
Shadow King character. Yeah, and I agree with what Lord Akira is saying here. When they say difficult to work with and they don't give specifics, specifics, that usually means not obedient anymore. Yeah. Uh, that's the way I feel. But you're also uh, Disney with certain morality standards and who knows mm -hmm. yeah who, who knows yeah. i mean you know if he was chased away for the wrong re well for the wrong reason i mean hopefully we find out i just can't believe that they'd even risk it with a black gay dude but hey yeah, that's super did. chat's not true uh i've said multiple times well, i'm not going to do an event with a pedophile if he wants to pull up on me i'll be at la comic-con that's and uh he's not far from la if he's saying that there's going to be some event boxing event that's not happening okay yeah so just so people who, are, who may just be listening i'm not doing a promotional on. event with a pedophile yeah. war tooth 88 asks yellow Fash says can't wait to see you on lay the smackdown on somebody in the next month match and if they're saying there is going to be one what flash is saying is it's bullshit uh so yeah yeah if he wants to pull up on me at la comic-con uh he can do it there i'm not doing a promotional event with a pedophile and I have no idea what that's all about. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Doug 1985 uh, sends in a member chat for nine months and says, watch David Fincher's new movie, The Killer. Mr. H has been telling you for weeks to watch it. Yeah, I've heard about it. Um, I like Fincher all right. I, I'm not as big on him as everybody else is, though. Sean Carter sends in 10 and says, I don't think that it's that they're att attracted to the type of person. It's that they don't have to compete with them there's that part too this group wants every everything easy in life with no challenges or adversity well yeah this, this group is doesn't want anyone to compete because they're commies well and actually it's funny that you said this because the perfect meme just popped up on my feed here a little bit ago there you go this is their yeah you can't have one because it's you know the male gaze but the other one's okay i'm not even going to say it. you're gonna have to look on screen so i, I can't describe it <laughs> Little Abby smash there. Waltman four sends in nine ninety nine says you forgot that Ridley made the aliens Colonel Marines game canon, revealing that Hicks was taken out of the pod and was still at LV four two six alive, and the Hicks in the Alien three was an NPC mistaken. I that sounds like such convoluted bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, this is why I hate retcons like this stuff. Yeah, no, that is so silly sounding. There was no, what? They barely made it out alive. Like she was carrying him into the pod because he could barely, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. I know you didn't make it up, Walt, man. It's the way the game and Ridley said, that just goes to show you how silly Ridley can be sometimes. DCB Titan sends in Kitty and $2 says, as long as they don't get another Ultima Ascension. Uh, this was the second time I think this was brought up today. And none of us are uh, yellow flash. Rooted. What is an Ultima Ascension? This must be some game thing. I think it's an MMO. I don't. I've never played it. I don't really know anything about it. That's what he said the last time you asked him, Andre. <laughs> or am I living in the Matrix again? Like, <laughs> because we just had this question like a half hour ago. But yeah, or an hour. I'm ago. just asking who is most likely to know it. Yeah, we asked him then, and he didn't. He said he hadn't played. <laughs> So I think somebody else brought it up in a different super chat before uh, Calhoun sends in five and says, this is the corruption of higher learning. I bet 76% of their college degree is classes not related to programming. DEI SJW been in Eunice since the 2000s. Oh yeah. This definitely all comes out of uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, they've been there far longer than that, but that's when they yeah. really started going down on the, in the current program really hardcore that's when they begun it that's when they begun their influence mm -hmm. of, the, of what we see today well, a lot of this is actually rooted in the 90s pc stuff yeah uh, yeah and it goes back to the all the way back to the 70s actually i was gonna say yeah the hippie movements and stuff kind of but you're probably not wrong there uh dcb titan sends in a canadian 10 and says ultimate essentia and here we got our answer is a game that was so bug filled after months of patching the company washed their hands of it because every fix just allowed access to more bugs oh <laughs> uh, so it's one of those things where you, you no matter how much you fix it it just breaks something else it looks like an rpg i'm looking at it. i've heard of it i never played these games 
Yeah, I've I think, never played that one. Yeah, there's an old NES person. game. I think a lot of them. Yeah, there's an NES, SNES game. Yeah, they look like RPGs. I never played these. They just basically look like turn based RPGs. So basically, they eventually decided, okay, let's do one Ultima fix and then fuck it. They decided that this thing is not fixable. Well, it would have been so much better if you hadn't rushed the programmers because I, I, I've I, done enough development that I know what that is. That is programmer, that there's something really fundamentally wrong in the design or the implementation or something like that, that the things gets released in an unfinished state. And from that point on, it's really not fixable because you have to go back and make such core changes and you have to patch everything from the ground up to 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 adhere to those changes. Otherwise, you can have all of these new bugs because they don't even know what one change here is going to have of reper repercussions everywhere else. This is what happens when you rush a game through completion, this happens because you have a release date and you plan on putting out a beta at this point and then finishing it up afterwards. Well, with that method, you run the risk that you have done such a shoddy job that you don't even have a releasable beta. And that's what they didn't have. They didn't even have a minimum viable product. And so they put out something to market that was not fixable because of the process that went into it. That's what happened there. And then no amount of fixes can do it because they basically have to start over. I think, yeah. uh, actually, you know, this Super Chat, there's a lot of people going back to retro games. It's actually... I was Let's reading uh, read the Super that. Chat first. Chaos Sonic 1 says for $5. Here's the thing. We gamers have a massive backlog and go back to playing the old games and to those that don't have one, there is emulation or eBay. Carry on, Yellow Flash. The, well, I I read uh something the other day about how retro gaming is booming. The I didn't even know there's a lot of people watching retro game content on TikTok and YouTube. It's uh, like the most popular thing for people to watch. There's like a resurgence of retro gaming going on right now, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But I think the biggest one is the like Tom has been saying the simplicity of just sitting down and playing the game and popping it in and you know it's just there's a charm to those games that I think is lost well I even today. get sick and tired of having to wait to load it up like you have to actually wait well that's for not a big thing anymore it isn't anymore but not with solid state hard drives it's almost a thing of the past it isn't now, but, but like even that was getting to be a little too much for me to piss around with before the online shit I was just saying but yeah. I think, I'm just uh, one of those people I'm used to sticking in the Nintendo game or the Sega game and it's just fucking working, right? <laughs> like, not I having think, to wait five hours for it to load up. I think retro gaming is coming back and well I mean uh, you're already seeing it with a lot of indie developers making like retro style games. I, I remember having just an enormous amount of fun with an old Mac game called Dark Castle. And I've been trying to find a way to get a copy of that um there's sort of broken versions of it here and there all over the place but i remember just having a hoot playing dark castle and suddenly one day i just went you know what i feel like playing dark castle i wish i had it <laughs> we need we need to get the old games back and made available those floppy games are the thing that sucks about them is it's hard to you have to basically set up an old computer yeah <laughs> to play them which yeah, people, some people do. There's a guy on uh, YouTube that I've watched for a long time. It's his name is Rock Metal Jesus, or Jesus Metal Metal Jesus Rocks, and uh, he has a old school computer set up in his gaming room for mm. big box games. And that's well, all. I've been, I've been for. playing. I've I've got in my gaming room. I've got the C sixty four machine up, and I've got uh, my Intellivision. I was playing an Intellivision game the other day. Nice. Just yeah. because you know what? It's just so much fun. They're they're really really neat, interesting um, games to play, and they're just a great diversion from this ultra real looking stuff, which now is all looking the same to me. Yeah, I've been really wanting to go back and play 
older game. Like, I really want to go back and play the old RPGs, like uh, the old Final Fantasies. I've been thinking about I never played, played through Final the Fantasy. Pixel remasters. There's some really good ones. I would start with f- uh, four and six if you ever wanted to try them. Yeah. Are they on Steam? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think they are on Steam, actually. The retro re- they call them the Pixel Remasters. They just have they're still pixels, but they kind of look a little bit sharper. They and they have better artwork. The problem is the translations on some of them are a little uh, not so much woked up, but they changed it so it wouldn't be so offensive. But the overall package is still there. Mm-hmm. Well, we're yeah, about to on there. I'm looking on Steam right now. We're about to lose Paul here, so I just want to grab one more super chat before he does go. Uh, Twenty dollars from Tennille says programming request. Apologies if selfish to uh, of me to ask, but any chance the interruptions could be made less frequent? It's just I'm multitasking at work and have a hell of a time, hard time keeping track of the conversation. <laughs> well, we do try to do our best, especially Paul and I, uh, of trying not to be too interjective. I've been um, very tame today. Yes, both of us, I think, have tried to do our best. But sometimes I think what happens is we get. I don't know if it's so much, and I'm not trying to make excuses here, but I don't know if it's so much the interruptions as it is we go down tangents and different rabbit holes <laughs> is more so I think maybe part of the problem. But that well, we we do try. We very much do try, and uh, I'll definitely keep trying harder in the future, to Neil and I. I'm sure Paul will as well as everyone else. But uh, I, I do what my brain tells me. I'm sorry. That's right. I'll say that's what clips are for, and sometimes right. those tangents make excellent clips. Sometimes they do, but I do understand how they can get you off track of like, what the hell are they talking about now? <laughs> I, can, I can see where that's coming from. But uh, so, Paul, what do you got coming up? Am I getting a TV guide video yet? I'm working on it. I'm uh, This weekend, I should have it finished writing. Um, and uh, I'll ha- I think I have another... Um, I have another appalling news episode coming up today. So lots of just insane, insane stuff. It never ends. So what can I say? (laughs) That's the way life is on YouTube. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, Nice to see you, Yellow Flash, again. Always, Andre. Good good seeing you, Paul. I can't wait to hear your response to the things I sent you, by the way. Yeah, uh, you sent it to me. uh, On X. On X, okay. Because as soon as I log off here, this disappears. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, thanks for joining us today. Have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Take care. Take care. Um, and then let's get back into these here. Uh, did we get this one? I think we got this one. Yes, we did get that one. Okay. Uh, Paulus Plain sends in a hundred new region Corona and lets us know that sweet baby ink detected is at 368,684 curators. There you go. Or curator followers. I should say. So thank you for that. Uh, and that reminds me, I got to reach back out to Cabrutus. Uh, the Sumerian, uh, sends in 499 says buying stellar blade. I don't even own a PS (laughs) five. There you go. Uh, dark King sends in two and says, Geo G G O G. I don't know why I said what is G O G anyway. I know it. I'm trying to think it's, uh, uh, fuck. I can't It's an online game store where with offline play options. Someone I know I've to say. I was going to say, yeah, I know what it is, and I'm drawing a blank right now for some reason. Um, uh, then we got Hypergyver2 says, Alan Richardson is tank- has tanked his career faster than anyone before him. I have pity Henry Cavill. I have to pity Henry Cavill. Dude's career is getting nuked by morons. Okay, so is this the guy from... Uh, uh, Alan Richardson. Uh, that's this is yeah. This is the guy who who plays uh, Reacher. Okay, yeah. I believe what, that's what he is referring to is the Orange Man bat, and how many people, especially Christians, embrace Orange Man bat, and what Richardson said. I, I do not have the exact words in front of me, but it was something. He basically said everybody who would follow him is retarded or something like that. Yeah, Kind of like that. Like, uh, you should not be forgiving this guy. Like, you should want to see this guy plugged or something like that. Why are you flocking behind him considering everything he did on J6 and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, I yeah, that do not think... I don't get the point of this. Uh, why would you tell what is probably your biggest demographic of viewers on Reacher yeah. 
to basically fuck off. It is fuck so him. Stupid. It is yeah. so he's, he's just another Hollywood piece of shit, as far as I'm concerned now. Uh I, I will not be watching Reacher season three, I can tell you that right now. Yeah. I, I Look, don't know. I... Go ahead. Yeah, carry on. No, I, I was just saying I thought that you just continue. You probably I, I I wasn't gonna say something stupid, probably anyway. I was gonna say, like, I, I don't know that his career is tanked just yet, but I do wish that he would have some kind of awareness of exactly who his core audience is and what kind of people find a series like Reacher appealing. And if he were to do a demographic breakdown of his core audience he might be surprised to find that diminishingly few of them are liable to be Biden supporters. Now, I guarantee you the majority of that audience is definitely not uh, Biden supporters for sure. And if you, but like, and so kind of like, if you try to put yourself, if you think that people have embraced Reacher to the point where you, Alan Richen, can go against the orange man bad and the audience are going to decide that you know what screw the orange man i'm going to go with richson on this one then you alan richson are sadly mistaken yeah he's an he's an idiot that's the dumbest thing like he hadn't said anything before he was just out there all he had to do was shut and... up and say nothing yeah exactly most of these people in hollywood just don't get that they've ruined the movie star image with their transparency and political political mouths over yeah. the past eight years i can't remember celebrities ever acting like this my entire life the internet ruined the movie star well Social media they, killed the movie star. i was just gonna say they always had stupid opinions and shit like that but generally it just you know you didn't hear them because they didn't have the internet right you're right 100 percent. the social media has made it very where, few of them get it one that does is yeah. like anna de armas yeah. like yeah i just i wouldn't even have an instagram if it wasn't for contracts like well, I on the other stay si- off the internet the other side of it is even if you don't have a very high opinion of a politician you hit it i think more so on the head in the front end of the conversation basically you don't want to divide your audience, especially when chances are, when it comes to a show like Reacher, a good large portion of your audience is probably conservative. And then you shit on Christians on top of it all. See, that's the thing is it's, it's not, you're just doing it to one section. Then you do it to another section. And just because somebody may not like somebody, it's like, okay, I get that. That's fine. But when you're in a position like that, where you're saying that, a lot of those people may not necessarily like that person either, but I'll tell you right now, this is what I was going to say before. Fuck it. You want to know why the Christians like Trump so much? I'll tell you why I can tell you the number one reason why is because he's pro-life. That is it. That is all it takes for the Christians to be okay with somebody. It doesn't fucking matter what almost the rest of the things that he does. That is what is the sticking point. So just leave it alone. That is a hotbed of problems to get into in the first place. Why would you even bring that up as an actor? That is not your job. And you shouldn't even be talking about it. Even if you're asked about it, like your response should be, look, I mean, I'm just an actor. I'm not a politician or a doctor. I don't understand, you know, the, 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 you know, the ramifications of all these things. So I don't think I'm somebody who should have an opinion on that, or my opinion should be public on that. You know, that's all you got to do is say something like that. That's my opinion on that. But anyway. And that would be the perfect response. Honestly, that is what everyone who is in a position where you have to have the widest audience possible like you. Because whenever an actor becomes some kind of uh, of an activist, especially in the realm of politics, it's like fine if, if you want to save the whales or something. But the moment you step into politics, you have to realize that at best, at absolute best, you're going to lose half the audience. And looking at polling and stuff like that, you go against the orange bad man bad right now, you're going to lose a crap ton more than half your audience. And considering that Reacher is your bread and butter right now, 
you'll be losing like 80 to 90 percent of your audience so yeah i agree that this kind of thing he needs to move away from this fast and hope that people forget but but yeah you're right tom going against the orange man bad and against christians at the same time you better hope they have short memory spans because this thing right here this can translate into a very fast a noticeable drop for Jack Reacher on Amazon. Yeah, it's not going to help it. Uh, and War Tooth eighty uh, eight on this also says, "I warned everyone last year about Richardson. Everyone forgot about him talking about the treatment and how people should be mandate." Oh, he did that too, did he? Now, all right. Well, you are not surprised today, then. Yeah, and there's some people saying in the chat that he actually went against pro-life now. And if that's the case, that's Trump's fault. And I'm not going to get into politics here. But that's the fundamental thing why they overlook all his other shortcomings was my point from before. Okay, and he's yeah, getting so himself yeah. into a... Well, he, yeah, took he's a getting, he took a softer stance on it. He went with, you know, let's have exceptions for, like, incest and rape and stuff. Look, the he's trying to win women vote. Like, he's trying to win some women voters over. That's... What he's doing basically oh, is trying to win over la women at the expense of every other woman which he's not going culture. to yeah yeah uh yeah i think which in those well, things that... usually go unsaid in most cases are accepted but like even that's just ground where christians really that's where they plant their flag and they don't move but yeah anyway i don't want to get down that path even farther than we already have yeah it's, uh, a, it's a it's a big one Yes, uh, Grand Wazoo Forty Two says Infocom is a word I did not hear in a long time. Love your retro game talk. Keep them coming. Well, we're planning on it. We're planning on it, but uh, it takes time to get things together. But uh, hopefully, we'll have a gaming channel before long. Uh, Tanil Eighty Nine says uh, Andre, this is one we were all tearing apart on Mister H yesterday. I think this is in reference to the uh, uh, Lara Croft. That's when it came up. I paid attention. All right. Yeah. 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 Yes, so the, the Lara Croft one. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Uh, we, we had fun tearing that one apart. Yeah, I wanted to make it to the show. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to. But fortunately, Andre made all the points I was going to make on Sly, and that's the only thing I really had much to add to anyway. So, yeah. Tenille89 says, even fucking Brianna Wu is I shit kept talking this game. <laughs> is that true? Yes. Wow. Yeah. When you're starting to get the wokey wokes on board with certain things, that's what I was talking about with Velma the other day. I think was it you flash who was asking how the fuck did that get renewed or somebody else was asking i how said the something about it on twitter yeah and I, the thing is is that is because they ordered two seasons so it was already in production well, before. they've got no problem putting anything else on the shelf i know right but for some reason, i can't that believe that they're doing stuff. this i have no idea but it's because it's an animated show and it was actually finished i have no idea but uh yeah see like that's the thing is people also don't understand like batwoman wasn't finished right yeah but that fucking coyote movie was mm, that i'm still i have not gotten a confermation on whether that was completely finished or not that See, sounds I've heard, like it was i've heard conflicting much things that they didn't have all the animation done yet and they still had some shooting to do so I'm that's right they put a lot of movies on the shelf for tax returns but yeah i know reason, but this to me this show was capable of going all the way it's because it's already pre see and then all the assets see that's the other thing about an animated show nine times out of ten they already have all the assets ready to go too so once the production gets rolling they just through it like it's a whole season instead of just one but it i have a all. theory on why yeah. that one is going through though in addition to all the animation and stuff plus like some that. di money probably yeah well it's not so much that it's a dei money it's the g in esg here governance ah so so it's not that they get money for it it's a matter of are you able to retain the credit lines that you need to stay in business in order to do that you need to have your equity you need That's to have true. your diversity but you also need to have your g governance you need to be able to show that you are doing these things now you can have g governance while canceling batgirl you can have G for governance while canceling 
most of the stuff on CW because you still have that other stuff to hide behind. But the moment you kill that too, the bankers are going to start killing credit lines. Yeah, there so wasn't enough. Some minimum G to hide behind. And this series right here is animated. It was in development already. It may simply be a matter of the corporate and long term financial consequences from losing credit lines. That hit is potentially greater than just releasing the shit and taking taking the audience hit on that. This is the well, yeah, thing I see what you're getting at, too. It's also like, I can't remember who said something about this recently, but it was one of these companies that basically admitted that they do certain things just so they can get these people off their back so they can do the things that they want to do. Exactly, right? and Amazon does this. Because like for, yeah, for Amazon, maybe that was somebody in Amazon who would say yeah, that. Yeah, Amazon, because that's how they're able to do something like Reacher, because they have these quotas, right, that Marvel applies on everything. Uh, but uh, in Amazon, they only apply that for the whole year. So you have a few super duper ultra woke productions, and then they are so woke that you can get away for other things without any wokeness. That's yeah, how there wasn't you can enough. Have your kill list. That's how you can have your reacher. And for for Warner, I think if they were to lose this Welma thing, they may have lost too much. They're not going to meet their quota. They're going to lose their G. I don't know, yeah, their, I see what you're saying there. Because yeah, basically in the in the Roadrunner Coyote case, there's not enough trans people in the movie Flash. That's the problem. See, no, I but believe it. <laughs> no, actually, I, we we found what supposedly was the leaked uh, a leaked uh, uh, breakdown of the movie. And I honestly, I'll tell you to be honest with you, because every every studio had an option on this; they could have bought it. They didn't, and I think I know why because the movie sucked. From what I read, like, yeah, it's probably awful. It sounded like, and it really kind of sounded like what I had said initially, and that was that it's something that would work as a concept for like a short film or like a funnier die skit. But once you try to extend it into a movie and actually actually make a plot out of it, it gets really bogged down in stupidity. Like the court scenes, there's hardly any of them, and what is there is like kind of stretching it. It's it was not very interesting from what I heard. If that's the actual movie. It was like, okay, I can see why this movie didn't happen now because and why nobody bought it because it was just horrible. Uh, and that which could, cannot be overstressed enough. Everyone has seen it. We haven't seen it, but all the other studios have seen it. Amazon have seen it. Paramount have seen it. Universal has seen it. Sony has seen it. They've all seen it. They were all told, here's the price. This is what we need to charge for it in order to justify to our shareholders why we sell this thing in case you have a hit out of it because we would rather uh, take uh, take a loss on this than to sell it for too little and then suddenly you turn it into a hit we can't do that our and add on to that for it and and, uh, and because of that the asking price was high enough that no one had faith in it and that's just it. Yeah, I was just going to say, and, that, and, and and ensuring that it also didn't hit the public for less than, yeah, they made sure the asking price was enough. Because that's why I think the movie got canceled in the first place. I'm almost convinced now that it had to do with the new animation director that took over at Warner Brothers, decided, yeah, this is not the direction we're going, and canceled it. Because even James Gunn is one of the producers on it. And everybody keeps coming to him like, save the movie, save the movie. And he's like, I have nothing to do with that. So he must not even have that much faith in it because he knows he could probably pull some. I can I can tell you exactly what he had in it. Or like, I can guess. Yeah. They had right. a script. They're like, this shit isn't working. Let's go to James Gunn. He's magic. He can fix everything. Here, give it a pass. Okay, fine. This can't be salvaged, but here I changed up a few lines. Now you have the cred of James Gunn worked on it, and that he isn't embracing it means that that's all it was. He never had anything to do with it other than one rewrite to try to sell salvage it. And since he's not embracing it, that wasn't enough. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. He says he can't, he has nothing to do with it, but he's got enough pull at the studio. He could, that's my point. Uh, and I think they're just, yeah, they, they it, it, and the movie still isn't finished from what I remember hearing. I know you said it, you think it was flash, but I don't think it was. See, that's the same, same thing going around with like, gotta remember Batgirl wasn't finished. Um, 
even the Justice League wasn't finished. As much as people like to still run with that shit, it never was. It needed another $90 million worth of work to get put out. <laughs> so that's the other thing, too, they look at it is how much more work has to go into these things. And I think Andre's more right about why uh, Velma's continuing more than anything. Yeah, I could imagine. But uh, we'll have to see how it goes here because people are saying in the chat they weren't even promoting it or aren't even promoting it, which would make sense. Robert sends in five and says, Star Wars Outlaws, Catherine Hicks from Voyage Home leaves Starfleet Science Division. Her friends Admiral Haldo does math and math and becomes they them solo. Kind of looks like it, yeah. Kind of, yes, yeah. I see the, the resemblance to a point, although that's... Adam Wolford sends in five and says, found rising tabletop games that usually takes half of what EBS for Cyberfrog, tabletop game Lancer, uh, mech RPG raised 160,000 out of this June. So from what Adam's saying here, it costs about half of what it costs. So yeah, that was pretty close. Uh, action com says where D or DI gets truly bizarre is when they DI hire and the art material is actually a perfect fit. Like DeMeo, when they do a good job, they can them. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, me. that if this, that's the case, it's start, starting to look that way. Yeah. They're through yeah. your all your DEI practices. You accidentally hired the one good guy and damned him. Yeah. Well, and he worked on Witcher too. That was my point earlier. And he was, yeah, he was the one who said that he didn't like that they didn't stick to the source material. And he was also the one who said that anybody he was hiring for X Men had to know the original show. He insisted they watch it anyway, or whatever it was. Um, Cheesy train Tarian, sorry, cheesy Tarian, not train, sends in five dollars. Says Tom, I gave you a hundred super thanks on Surfet announcement on After Dark last Flashcast. You show your butter dish. I did, and I posted it on Twitter, and I even sent you a link to that. Hey, hey cheesy Tarian. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, it's probably a ways down my. Did links you here. post your to- butter dish? I did, I did. So if uh, Andre, you want to go to the next super chat while I'm looking for that, I'll bring it up here. I gotta search for it though here. You can read it too if you want. You're muted. You're muted, Andre. Unless Sorry you about that. Uh, Chaos <laughs> on five dollars. So your thoughts on Capcom going woke? Honestly, I called it ever since they were going after modding. So I'm not even shocked at this point. I don't know too many details here. Yellow Flash, what's Capcom doing? Well, it's the localization team posted this big long thread on on what they do for localization how they change things basically for western values is the tldr and it's that's not what you're supposed to do Mm. so a lot of people talking about that today right they've got to find some way you know to change it up from japan because japan doesn't put any of that stuff usually in there yeah and you of course you need to have uh, all your you need to transit up then from western markets add a few rainbows here and there and stuff right yep yeah oh there you go uh be quicker for me just go get my oh there it is jesus sadly not surprised i was gonna say it's almost quicker for me just go get the goddamn thing here you go uh oh that thing it, yeah, I had I, I just pulled it out of the dishwasher and took a picture. So there you go. Oh, all right, okay. But uh, uh, yeah, I used to actually have an old school '80s one, but it broke in the move. I was so pissed. Yeah, can't have everything. And the DCV Titan says for two Canadian dollars, you mean he walked off the plantation? Uh, are we talking about the Mayo now? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah if it well. was the Witcher thing, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't remember if he quit or he. Fire, Certainly, yeah. he he was uh, actively walked up the marble plantation. They're, they're probably talking the about. Fire. I don't think they're talking about the Witcher guy. Oh yeah, they are. He I forgot he did work on the Witcher. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember though if he quit or got fired. That was the thing. I know he left around the same time Henry Cavill did. That's all I remember. And yeah, he, had, he was the same thing he did. The direction of it. Uh, many were yeah. optimistic about X Men '97 already then, with good reason it would appear. Uh, and then Tennille89 says for $5, Yellow Flash, Tom will appreciate this. 
If you find yourself in Brentwood when you're here, I can recommend a restaurant that specializes in pie and only pie. Okay. Especially pizza pie. Where's Brentwood? Isn't that like I'm, in LA or something? I was going to say, isn't is it? In, in LA? Yeah. I've never been to LA before, so. Neither have I, but I think it is. I've never Where's even been to California York? before, to actually, to be honest. So, be interesting to see uh, the human shit on the sidewalk up close. <laughs> I went to LA and all I got was some shit. Uh, Magician yeah. Sapphire. Uh, okay. Galaxy of Games. That's what it is. Okay. Thank you for the $2 and for. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the clarification. Pulling me in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, War 288 says for uh, $2, Starfield can't be fixed. No Man's Sky is great now. Oh, well, something is great. Mm. Though. That's good to know. Uh, Rogue Thinker has been a member for 24 months. Two years. Yeah. Awesome. And Retro Reels and Games says for $5, Sean Carter here. I'm streaming all games on this account, currently playing oh. KOTOR and the original Baldur's Gate. Sorry for the shameless plug. Well, it's all right. No, you uh, paid so, for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, pay more for it next time and we're all good. And uh, <laughs> then uh, Xian Hu says for $77.42, it would be wise for all actors to presume that 50% of their audience, a.k.a. paying customers, disagree with them politically yeah i agree with that you can't be a popular actor especially not in a genre show if yes. you begin dividing the audience you would think they would have learned from years ago and maybe it's just so far in the past that a lot of these younger ones don't remember but jane fonda fucked her career doing that shit right like she went hardcore in on the anti-government stuff during vietnam and all that shit and got the name hanaway jane right and her career tanked for the longest time she didn't make a movie for like 15 fucking years i think it was like monster in law was like her first movie in like a decade or 15 years i can't remember which it was but yeah musicians can get it. john lennon was pretty vocal too and i don't yeah well musicians are a little different but because most of them are all hippies anyway to begin with and that's why uh, it's yeah. a matter of when as well yes uh, because remember yeah. they could, I think, they but could I, do I also think the there's day. a i think there's a different in anti-war protesting and chopping kids dicks off yes uh, there's a big uh, difference between those two uh what's sad though is in the sand you know what i'm saying because i'm pretty anti-war myself i don't like war you know it's pretty awful uh but uh chopping kids dicks off and their boobs off that i'm kind of against i don't the problem is there, there not... is no and honestly there is no middle ground for me on that uh, i'm pretty hard in the sand on, on no that, argument on there flash but my point was like you know like they actually would accept you more for that. they're they're advocating for that. that's the problem it's not the other way around like i'm all i i completely agree with you well the problem no, is like... also that they are in an uh, they're in an echo space where where that is be with that I'm not going to say it because we're on YouTube, but that which you are so against uh, Yellow Flash, which I do not blame you for, in their echo chamber, that is being treated as the most important social justice cause of our time, to the point that even YouTube has hyper protected it. To the point that this dream is probably going to demonetize now. <laughs> probably and they are an environment. Where that's what they get fed back twenty four seven, and they're even told you need to take a stand on this. You can, you have a platform. You can make a change. These people and get bad advice, so they need to trust someone outside out outside interest to have their best interests uh, at heart. And not everyone has that. And basically, like the whole Hannaway Jane thing, like yeah, basically. It wasn't the fact that she was anti-war. I think it was what John Z says here on the screen more so than anything. You know, like John Lennon said a lot of stupid shit and did a lot of stupid things and whatever. But the one thing he didn't do is go sit on top of an anti-aircraft gun. Yeah, that's the absolute thing. Like she went <laughs> a little too far. <laughs> like, you know? But I mean, yeah, right. Like most of us can get behind an anti-war sentiment. Like nobody wants war, right? Like, duh. Uh, Andy's uh, Masterson's in the house and he's letting us know that the Dylan Mulvaney figure has one and can be removed and put back on. Well, that's good to know. 
name. You can all guess what he's talking about. I am tremendously impressed with that figure. I have to say, it is amazing. The, of all the figures I have seen, I think that one may be the single most impressive, far more impressive than the reality actual thing. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Bad News Badger sends a fifty Danish Corona and says. Uh, whenever I boot up my Commodore 64, I play one game all day because I can't be bothered waiting one hour to load a <laughs> loading up a new one from the cassette tape. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, and then we got Jesus Davila who says smash the like button and he's been here for 29 months. Thank you for that. And also gifted a membership. Thank you, Jesus Davila. Uh, Action Com says it sends in two and says, should we get DeMeo for Midnight's Edge? Oh, I'd well, love I'd be very happy DeMeo. He's him. probably on an NDA. Though, I so. think that's the case or he would have spoke out Most already. Most likely, yeah. but I, I would love to have him on. Yeah. Because his last cryptic post was basically like the truth will come out kind of thing. So like yeah. he's probably just biding his time and waiting till he, he can. Has an, he has an, uh, when he's ready to talk, he has an open invite here. We'd be very happy to talk with him. No, we get asked a lot uh, if we would talk. We talk to anybody pretty much uh as long as there's a good reason to talk to him i mean even kathleen kennedy we've mentioned kurtzman all these people jj Uh, we've actually had uh had a request for people who want to come on and like but here's the red lines uh no if you're going to come on there's no red lines there's only a few people we'll respect certain red lines with and then we've uh, lost them because we're like no 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 if you come on here to promote your book or whatever we're going to talk about this too and the only time no interest in talking, so that's happened. I was gonna say the only time we respect the red lines is when it has something that has something to do with it has nothing to do with what we report, right? Yeah. That's the only time. Yeah, or when it's when it's like something where there's a business reason why you can't talk about that NDA, yet. whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah or like, because it's like an up that kind of goes without saying. Yeah, now, so that goes without saying. But for like other things, for like. This stuff here in your past, we really can't go skip or pretend that didn't happen. And I mean, to, and to give him a little bit of credit, even though I know he's not a very popular person, Penders was one of those that, yeah, I think you kind of said that to him too. Basically, yeah. you're like, yeah, we did. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk to you, but we're not going to pussyfoot around shit because people are going to ask and we got to ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you did. So, yeah. And that I was very, to happy his credit, to he was like, all right. Yeah. No, no, I, I have nothing but the but the highest respect for him. He he agreed to come on with no red lines. Yeah. So, so. Uh, massive credit to him for that. Not for all the stuff he did as a writer. As I say, he may not that, be very, yeah. very popular, but I can give him that much, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Horseradish Power sends in five pounds and says, just watch Civil War, desperate threat to 45. If you get back in, uh, we will get you. They have a massive hate boner for him. Powerful film, well made. This yeah, is what I was afraid funny. of. That this is a propaganda film, yeah. but it's an extremely well made propaganda film. And the propaganda is that all the stuff that they're threatening that forty five is going to do is what forty six is doing right now as we can speak. Uh, I've got some free tickets, so I'll, I'm going to watch it. Either to, tonight or to hook tomorrow up, morning. Yeah. It's in the Flashcast DM. Oh, room. I didn't see it. People, I just posted it yesterday. People post so much stuff in there, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, it becomes a little bit of a talking room sometimes, but it's, it's, it's in there. Just scroll back. It's there. Oh, Lord. All right. Anyway, STR Red Wolf has one for Yellow Flash and me. Uh, thank you for the 10. It says, in Baltimore, we have dangerously delicious pies, with, which, oh, it's in Baltimore. Uh, which specializes in all pies and only pies. You do not need to get stabbed to enjoy one. Well, that's good. <laughs> I guess. Uh, does, is is do people normally get stabbed in Baltimore? Is that a thing or? Well, actually, they, yeah. Depending on where you are in Baltimore, that's a thing. Wow. I guess I've never been to Baltimore. I hear Baltimore Most I... has a really good Comic Con that, and that's because a lot of people live around there they go there for vacation well i was gonna say like the biggest thing i know about baltimore is mainly like john waters and shit like that so yeah but, uh, hmm, interesting one of these days you never know Tennille 89 uh says yeah brentwood is in la close to santa monica but i guess this is a different brentwood uh, that uh, str red wolf is talking about but uh, so we were both correct 
Brian Keith sends in $2 says Dixie chicks learn the hard way. Well, yeah, <laughs> that, and then kind of irony of ironies is how they had to change their name later on. Isn't that funny? They got, they lost a big portion of their audience by shitting on Bush. And then later on they had to change their name because Dixie was considered racist. Talking about uh, being on the wrong side of history several times over. Yeah. Oh, didn't and they change sad. their name to the chicks? Chicks. They're just called <laughs> the chicks. Yeah. And I think one of them just passed away not too long ago, but I, I, which is sad because actually musically they weren't that bad. I mean, I, yeah, but they, they fucked themselves and they fucked alienated themselves. a large yeah. portion of their audience. Like, yeah, this is dumb. Yep. And w what's sad is they kind of were right. <laughs> there was no weapons of mass destruction. But anyway, uh, that being said, uh, Max Relax has been here. For, Max Relax has been here for thirty months. Holy crap! That's Whoa. a long time. Tennille 89 says as a year long sufferer, I mean, a resident of LA, <laughs> I promise there's a difference between loud mouse on X and the rest of us. It's not just me. LOL. Well, yeah. And a lot of them are, a lot of y'all are like leaving, aren't you? <laughs> it's kind of Man, great, I did a video on that once. It's crazy. The great migration to rent a U-Haul in California, man. It's just, if you want to take it to Texas, it's well, like you know, a thousand dollars because they don't come back nobody's well, the other moving th there the other thing is now did you hear about that tax thing where they're like trying to make it to where you like you get because i think gary was talking about this one uh not too long ago where basically uh if even if you leave the state they still want to tax you for like the next five years or something like that yeah, good luck good luck getting that money yeah it's some bullshit like that i don't know but yeah anyway i'd send them some monopoly money <laughs> i mean our money's not that far from there anyway but. it's getting to that point yeah uh daryl brewer has been a member for 32 months holy crap holy thank you daryl and uh of course also for being on branch we appreciate that tenille 89 then sends in one more and says uh name uh, me one city without dangerous neighborhoods well, well you, you know you're right there's a lot of there's bad areas in every city but there's just a lot of shit coming out about you la know, and san francisco because they used to be really nice and yeah. they've turned to shit especially like san francisco i hear used to be so nice there not not even that long ago it's really just gotten so bad over the past like eight or nine years right chicago um, i used to go to chicago all yeah. the time and uh you know i i'd be i'm afraid to go walk the street i remember in like chicago Main street when there was... chicago now because I... last time i was there i was i went for a walk and i got offered cocaine and crack my on main street the free the magic mile the magnificent mile in chicago which is the nicest spot in downtown chicago people were asking me if i wanted to buy the hardest drugs there that's not something that you get in a nice city in a nice city on their main area where all the police forces you shouldn't have people asking you if you want to buy crack it's just something that usually just doesn't happen I remember you used to be able to walk around Chicago and there's pretty much only one part of town you stayed out of. And that was it. Um, but yeah, yeah I haven't been over by the white years. Sox stadium. Yeah. That was really about it. Uh, same thing kind of thing with Madison. Um, as long as you didn't, as you stayed away from like the CD or part of the East side, the rest of the city was pretty tame for the most part, but yeah, in yeah, recent I used to years, walk I around there, go to Chicago, walk out of a bar at four in the morning. Cause they used to be open two hours later there at the bar and nothing not even worried about it but now it's just it's it's terrible what's happened to that city and i'd give madison the credit that even then it was like you you didn't have to avoid that part of town during the day it was just at night right and i lived it's in madison during the day before. now yeah i know i'm sure it is in madison too but that's my point is like even a, when i lived there for almost a year i didn't hear a single gunshot any of that kind of shit but i can't yeah. imagine what it's possibly like now and that's the other thing I keep hearing too, is that all the, all the crime starting to migrate up north from, uh, uh, from Chicago up through Kenosha and all that stuff. So it's already hit way past, you know, it's, it's, it's too late, but sadly that's the, the case. And then, uh, Kalecki asks, are we going to read rumble rants? I've sent to, yes, actually we have been, and we got a couple here. Uh, I was just about to get to, uh, but I'll get to them now instead. 
Uh, Samurai Vader sent in two and says, speaking of gaming, Assassin's Creed has an issue that they removed support. They shut down the multiplayer and removed its assets and also blocking access to content from single player DLC. That's bullshit. <laughs> Especially if you paid for the DLC. Huh. That's what I don't like about that shit right there. And then Collect yeah, the has completed uh, games. Yeah. And on there, on, on, on the Rumble side, he's called Kalecki Oketi. So just to be uh, clear. Sends in 10, thank you, and says, Notice the game studios that produce these DEI heavy game studios. Uh, DEI heavy games, studios that have not made anything noteworthy in a while. Ubisoft, Crystal Dynamics, EA, uh, panel thoughts. Uh, yeah, no, I, I see where you're coming from here. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, when was the last time any of these companies had a big hit? EA, I, are they even practically in existence anymore? Who? EA, I was being Oh, yeah, there. they're still... I was kidding. From yeah. Madden alone, they're making up... I know, I know. Yeah, I, I, I haven't played an EA game in I don't know how many years. Uh, the, the, like, their, their recent big hits, I really couldn't even say. Uh, I, I haven't played that much to... to um, he also adds in here on the noteworthy thing. Let's say he also adds in here on the Rumble side with another five, two of which have produced or producing games for Disney. Crystal Dynamics is doing Marvel's Avengers or did Marvel's Avengers, and Ubisoft is doing uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Possible, likely those companies share the same views. Yeah, both of them have uh, have gone nuts on DEI, which you can tell from the from the games. Like I'm surprised. I, I like, and even without that, that's that avengers game with its horrid looking uncanny valley characters that were so different from the avengers that we know and love there's no reason why they should have made the game look like that in the first place i'm glad to see that it failed the way that it did mm -hmm. yeah and uh yeah actually i was correct and but it was i was wrong on the amount of years it turns out it's 10 years 10 years after you leave the california state uh, and you made more than 30, <laughs> your annual income exceeds 30 million. That's the, the catch. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, they're mainly trying to keep the big fish in. in yeah, in you the, can't tax people if they leave the, and take everything. You can't yeah, do that. I, I don't so, see how they could enact that. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice to know that they're hurting so bad that they have to kick that idea around. Right. Uh, but yeah, with that, we are caught up now. Uh, oh, we've got a couple more super chats on this side. Uh, we got action com here says once what another ugh, what adds another level of irony to the Dixie chicks is the anti-war movement was fake a controlled distraction to let uni party do its thing. Mm. Then we got yep, Irish. You're not wrong. Irish trash five who sends in five and says, uh, Juat went just, just went, oh, just to went Chicago to, to uh, go. Uh, so I bombs. saw a few bumps, but it's really not that bad. High praise there. Bars are still open till 4 a.m. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, oh, mean, I can't do the 4 a.m. bar. Well, one more. thing that probably helps with Illinois and help clear out some of the problems was they legalized weed not too long ago, too. I'm usually out by uh, 1 o'clock. So that probably cleaned out a lot of the drug, the minor drug dealers and shit like that. That helps. That's probably why they're moving up north because Wisconsin refuses to legalize it because they're dumb shits. But anyway, uh, Tennille sends in another super chat and says, Flash, oh, I don't agree. I don't disagree. Sorry. I grew up in New York. I'm just speaking in broad terms. I got I got you, Neil. I got you. Yeah. Rod Thunderheart's in the house, and he's been a member for 30 months. This is Hill Midnight's Edge in the Morning. See through love to nearing. Spanish teacher can turn invisible when angry. When aroused, it happens uncontrollably. Is shocked to find new gym teacher is blind, but can see her when is invisible. Book series coming. Yes. Check out See Through Love and coming soon, See Through Love 2 from Rod Thunderheart. Author. Uh, Adam Wolford sends in five and says, the event center that held the Godzilla Con had to hire armed security, and the hotel started giving guesses, and I think he means guests, and stars armed escorts up Chicago. Wow. Well, 
And then we got Forgotten Circus who sends in five says, love listening to you guys. Y'all are hilarious. Tom, you're my boy blue shout out from Forgotten Circus podcast. Holy shit. That's a long time ago. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, uh, we will wrap things up here. Flash, uh, other than Flashcast this weekend, anything you got going on that we should know about? Uh, that's the biggest thing. We should have Grums on. He, he's coming Ooh. on Saturday. And uh, a couple other people talk about what's going on and uh, we'll talk about that Civil War movie. Well, I'll try to watch that then. And uh, in the meantime, yeah, just uh, stay tuned. I'm sure we'll have a video or something at some point here in the next day or so. Uh, we try to anyway. Andre, anything else we should uh, remember to plug? Uh, we got a couple of uh, videos coming over the course of the weekend, so so just stay tuned for that, and we'll get uh, a confirmation in in the um, uh, channel pages, in the community pages uh, for for when the membership stream will be. So just stay tuned, and we'll uh, we'll get back to that real soon. Check out Midnight Set live archives for clips you may have missed, and with that, it is time. It is. One more time. It is time for some koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. No fuss given. Koalas in the rain.